marketers are now adopting measures to prevent a future financial sector meltdown. Correspondent Mike Gracia tells us about the tougher bank rules. Under rules adopted by the Federal Reserve, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and the Treasury's Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, the eight largest U.S. banks will have to have more capital on hand to cushion against unexpected losses. The ratio of capital to loans will be 5% for big banks and 6% for subsidiaries. The rule applies to the banks deemed too big to fail. Goldman Sachs, Citigroup, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley, Bank of New York Mellon, and State Street bank. The rule doesn't go into effect until 2018. Mike Gracia, Washington. Big questions about the validity of a new currency. A new prosecution in Florida will test whether money laundering laws apply to Bitcoin. Correspondent Tony Winton has the details. A surveillance recording captured the undercover agent's offer. Money for Bitcoins. Because I could probably get 50 grand. Okay. All right. Then we'll be cooking with gas. Moments later, Miami State Attorney Catherine Fernandez Rundle says law enforcement has to keep up with technology. These cyber criminals are way ahead of the rest of us. Defense lawyers claim entrapment, and they will argue that Bitcoin is not legal currency, meaning the case will test how the legal system reacts to electronic money. Tony Winton, Miami. Experts say change your passwords. Why? As correspondent Shirley Smith reports, there's another internet security threat. This time it's called Heartbleed. Security researchers say they uncovered a problem that's been going on for more than two years. They say it's exposed millions of passwords, credit card numbers, and other sensitive bits of information to potential theft by computer hackers. It's called Heartbleed. And it affects the encryption technology that's supposed to protect a wide range of electronic commerce. There is a way to close up the security hold, but it could take a while for everybody to fix it. In the meantime, experts say it it might not be a bad idea to change your passwords. I'm Shirley Smith. Imagine being in prison for a quarter of a century for a murder you did not commit. That nightmare is now over for a New York man who spent nearly 25 years in prison. Now his conviction has been overturned. Correspondent Warren Levinson has the story. In 1989, Jonathan Fleming was arrested for a Brooklyn murder. He was convicted the next year despite ample evidence he was in Florida at the time. Now he's been set free. I waited for this day to come, 24 and a half years, for this nightmare to be over. And this day is finally here. I dreamt about this many nights. Fleming, who's now 51, is the latest in a string of Brooklyn prisoners freed after serving long sentences for murders they did not commit. He stayed in prison long after a key witness recanted, saying she was promised leniency for an unrelated charge if she testified against him. Warren Levinson, New York. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. While digital communications coordinator Brian Tyler is considered by many of his co-workers to be the cutest guy around the offices of Western Psychological Publishing Services, employees conceded today the 27-year-old is not even particularly attractive. Brian gets a lot of attention from girls around here, but if I saw him in a bar, I don't know if I would even notice him. Put him next to Glenn or Mike, and then, sure, he actually looks pretty good. Co-workers explained to reporters that by everyday standards, Tyler would at best be considered moderately good-looking, but explained that given the abundance of unattractive men at the publishing firm, female employees often go out of their way to make small talk with the 27-year-old at his desk or eat lunch with him in the office kitchen. I saw him walking to work the other day, and half the guys on the street were easily better looking than him. But here, he's the hottest guy around. It's almost kind of sad. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'd still f*** him. This is the Onion News Network. Start. We're just going to start the show as though we're doing a regular program. However, hey, and the music comes up out of nowhere. Welcome to Free Talk Live. We weren't connected to the network, and then all of a sudden, there they are. So here we are to take your calls about absolutely anything that might be uh, on your mind tonight. You can join us on the toll-free lines at 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 
3733 or join us via Skype. The Skype username that you'll need to send a contact request to first before you call is lrn.fm. Joining you in studio, it's Ian. Brett. And Mark. Brett's here from the School Sucks Project. We'll talk more about that as time goes on here. Also want to welcome our brand newest affiliate... WRMN AM 1410 in Elgin, Illinois. WRMN has uh, been on board for a few days now, and they are taking Free Talk Live seven nights a week. Sweet. Live in Elgin. So if you're listening there to WRMN, maybe it's your first time listening to Free Talk Live tonight. Things are a little bit different on this radio program. Uh, Not only are we not Republican, Democrat, Talking Points talk show hosts, We're also open phones every single night of the week. So if there's something that's been on your mind and you just, maybe let's say you don't feel comfortable talking about it at the office because... Or nobody will listen to you at the office. Right, because, you know, they say you don't talk about politics and uh, religion around regular folk. You can do that with us. We don't have a problem with it. You can call in about whatever you want here, toll free at 855-450-FREE. And we don't always focus on the news of the day. I was uh, being interviewed on another brand new radio station that's taking us on Saturday nights today in West Bend, Wisconsin. And he asked me, what are some of the hot topics recently on Free Talk Live? And I don't even know, honestly, what the hot topics on the other talk shows in the business are because I don't pay attention to that stuff. Last night we were talking about kind of the ideology of liberty and how to get from where we are to where we want to be. And, you know, we will we'll talk about big ideas and we'll talk about the news of the day. We'll also discuss self-improvement as well. And Brett, for the last couple of weeks, we've been teasing our listeners and barely making good on our uh, teases, but but making good to some extent right? Yeah. On on talking about this lengthy article the 30 things that you should stop doing. And uh, I do have that tonight. Also, last night, something else that we teased and did not pay off at all was the new Chris Cantwell article, Why Libertarians Aren't Nice to You, 10 Reasons. So we'll get into that as well. But let's start on the positive side with uh, 30 things to stop doing to yourself. We'll only do one and maybe throw some more in throughout the show. Uh, So we're going to pick up on number five. Stop trying to be someone you're not. That's pretty good advice. This is a biggie, absolutely. One of the greatest challenges, says LifeBuzz.com, that's the source of this article, is being yourself in a world that's trying to make you like everyone else. Someone will always be prettier, Someone will always be smarter. Someone will always be younger. But they will never be you. Don't change so people will like you. Be yourself and the right people will love the real you. And I think this is one of the most important things that somebody could really take away from all of these 30 things that you know eventually we'll get through and, and talk about here. But the idea that you should be true to yourself so that you'll attract the right people to you. Absolutely. Because yeah. if you are living your life in a way that other people want you to live it, maybe you've adopted their moral paradigm or whatever it is that they think is important that you uh, emulate for them. If you are living your life by someone else's standards, you've essentially become their tool. You've become an extension of that person and their viewpoint. And so the people you'll attract to you are the people who are looking for that tool. They're looking for that kind of life, a person living that lifestyle, a person coming from that viewpoint. These are not going to be the people who will be your real friends. These won't be the people who are most appreciative of who you really are if you're living life for someone else. Yeah, and those relationships will be very conditional, too, because as a person gets to know you better and your true self starts to come through more and more, they're going to be like, wait a minute, false advertising. You know, this obviously happens a lot in romantic relationships. You know, people are not there... um, true selves right from the beginning they're mm-hmm. kind of often putting adver- up a front they're putting up a front they're they're doing false advertising and you know men say oh i just have endless amounts of uh time just just from you know past experience going back into my early 20s you know i say oh, i just have endless amounts of free time and interest to devote to you miss <laughs> and she would say how convenient i just have an endless appetite for sex mm-hmm. and uh you know after six months you neither find, one of you feel the same way <laughs> right and 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 it's dangerous because it, it, this if people put these false selves up from the beginning you might find 
that even though six months have gone by and you've made at that point perhaps some significant plans together a lot of people are living together mm-hmm. after some six, are married and and sometimes you know that's okay all situations are different so i don't want to sound judgmental like oh you moved in with somebody after only dating them for three months um but a lot of plans are made initially in that uh, initial high from sure. the physical relationship and then if people aren't who they said they were well, a lot of resentment can build, and that can lead to long-term, long-term relationship problems. But how do you really know who you really are? Right. Now, this is what I was going to say. That took me several decades to figure sure. out. I mean, you know, yeah. three decades at least to figure that out more. And that's, you know, I mean, to some extent, you when it when entering into relationships, and you have to enter into some relationships, like work, you know, mm-hmm. um, you've got to, pres- you've got to be something other than what you are. Um, I mean, even, and, and relationships are conditional. Ian, you probably wouldn't want me as your business partner if I just decided, you know what, I'll um, get up at noon and start drinking and <laughs> then who knows maybe you maybe know, that's me <laughs> maybe that's the magic formula <laughs> can you, for you come through with new advertisers and probably get up not and start drinking they, not probably not yeah see this is so yeah every every relationship's conditional what you want is the relationships the conditional relationships that best fit who you really are and want to be mm-hmm. yeah like you got to I think that you know those who you are and who you aspire to be, and that those need to fit. Like there's more better, um, you know, aspects of you that you want to sort of build up. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. yeah. You know, there's another problem too. Is that this isn't something that really is very explicit when we're growing up. That finding ourselves and learning who we really are is a process. And there's a, there's a metacognition. There's a thinking about our thinking and trying to to understand ourselves better. Um, we're not really made through most of our childhood to feel like individuals that matter. You know, whether we're talking about school or family, we're kind of existing. It seems often for the convenience of other people. Um, so, you know, a lot of people don't do that self exploration because they've never been invited to. They they don't even know that they they can get inside themselves and understand themselves better. Most people live their whole lives like that. Yeah, that's a good point. I, and I like what you call what was it? Metacognition? Metacognition. Meta? Thinking about thinking. This I think is a really important thing that people should do because the thoughts just come. They and do. you can observe your thoughts. You can uh you know, realize what it is you're thinking and analyze whether or not that is a beneficial thought to you. Uh, you know, not all of your thoughts are the best thoughts. You know, not all of the things that you think about are uh, the necessarily the path that you should go down. And uh, and really considering uh, those thoughts as they come in from the perspective of who is it that I want to create? I mean, who do I want to really be? That I think is an important process. And I agree with you. Most people don't. They don't seem to take part in that. Yeah. Now there is there's something different here as well that's worth pointing out. Uh, faking it until you make it. Right Mm -hmm. now, this is not faking your entire persona. Right. But there are things we want to do better in life. Right. We want to be more confident public speakers. Happy. Yeah. Uh, That, you know, that's not a bad example, you know, to to walk around. And I'm not, you know, a subscriber to like the secret, you know, like you just think about things and then they come to you. you I think that this is the secret of the secret is that there are some things that you can sort of, uh, you know, believe in and they will come to pass. And happiness is to some extent one of them. Well, the problem with the secret is they make it sound in the documentary anyway that I saw like it's magical. And Mm. the truth is, like, I had people working for me who were miserable people. They always complained and bad things kept happening to them. Why? Because those were the things that they looked for. Absolutely true. We can come back and talk about that. 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Whatever you look for, life gives you more of that. Uh, more on the way. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking 
at mathgate.info. I'm Chuck Woolery. You know, I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I really don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream. It's an arthritis pain relief cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn. It isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee, so you can use a whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt that you'll send it back. You know, the stuff really works. Get Australian Dream at Walgreens, CVS, or Walmart. Be glad you did. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and you are invited to take control of the airwaves toll-free, 855-453. That is the... Pro XPN toll free line, and you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that you'll find there on the site. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. And uh, I want to tell you about freeross.org. Freeross.org is where you can go to help out a man who is either innocent of the charges upon which he has been uh, the, the placed or he is guilty of those charges. But even if he is guilty, you shouldn't care because he hasn't hurt anybody. Ross Ulbricht has been accused of running the Silk Road, which is an underground black market website where people could trade all manner of interesting things. Some of those things are illegal in some countries. And the FBI was very, very interested in uh, in busting this operation. They did. They are accusing Ross Ulbricht of being the mastermind of it. 
We don't know if he actually was or was not. The trial has yet to occur. He's sitting in a prison cell right now awaiting that trial, and he has no access to any of his bitcoins. He has no – his family do, doesn't have any money. They're not rich. They need help with this defense. If you know about the Silk Road, you probably know about Ross Ulbricht. And if you want to learn more, go to freeross.org. You can learn how to support Ross and the defense uh, we'll keep you in the loop as we learn more about what's going on with his case. But right now, you can go to freeross.org and support him with PayPal, Bitcoin, of course. Also, you can cut a check at freeross.org. We're going to go to the phones. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, the secret here in a moment since, sure. we, since we've touched on that one. Let's go, though, to Robert. He's calling from Bellows Falls, Vermont. Robert, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Brett, and Mark. Hey, guys. Hey, Robert. Hi, Brent. Hi, Mike. Uh, how you guys doing tonight? Good. Go ahead with your thoughts, Robert. Oh, hey. Wow, we went to court today. Well, what you, happened? You did. That's right. Yeah. You well, have been arrested. I, uh... Just let me bring our listeners up to speed. You had been arrested for having some snow on your license plate. Uh, that wasn't the real reason for the arrest. That was the excuse to pull you over. They found a bottle of prescription pills or a container of prescription pills in your car you didn't actually have a prescription for those pills. They had been put there. You were cleaning out a house or something, I think, and your uh, nine-year-old granddaughter had found the uh, the prescription pills in the house that was being cleaned out. You took them from her, as, uh, as a good parent or grandparent should do, and uh, you, you put them in your glove box, promptly forgot about them, and then the cops found them when uh, you t- took them out of the glove box during the pullover. They charged you with a felony, and uh, you can go ahead and pick up the story from there, Robert. What happened? Well, we went to court today, and, uh, you know, I was really uh, hoping that I was going to be able to beat all of these charges, but because, and Johnny Ray was right, I got, you know, uh, because the pill was, even though it was an anti-inflammatory pill, it was a prescribed pill, and rather than to go ahead and, you know, uh, with the trial, I went ahead and I pled guilty to the two the transportation of from one state to another. Now, the thing that made me happy about this is that, you know, there was no fine. There was no community services. It doesn't affect my driver's license. And I'm happy with that. If I don't have to give the state of the Hampshire any money. So what was the punishment for taking pills, just to, prescription just pills take, from your granddaughter? Just, 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 just the ticket. The ticket for the snow? No, just no, the the ticket for uh, the transportation from one state to another. The other two tickets, they threw them out. So they threw out the snow ticket, the the one about uh, the re- the reason why you were pulled over in the first place, the so-called misuse yeah. of plates. Yes, they threw that out, and then they threw out the possession of the pills. Mm. So you were only left with a misdemeanor conviction. Which uh, and the the question Mark was asking, I'll just go ahead and answer. I was there. Uh, what the the actual sentence was, is if I'm recalling correctly, wasn't it six months in jail, suspended uh, for a period of a year, Robert? Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. And then uh, a six hundred dollar fine, suspended. Suspended also for a year. Yes. So this ticket. What is the punishment? I mean, usually tickets have a fine that go along with them. They're not really a ticket without a fine. So there's no punishment? No, no, Mark. The It's uh, it's a suspended sentence, which so means that nothing, uh, six, he's been sentenced to six months in jail, suspended for a year, meaning that if he is arrested tomorrow for more prescription pills or anything else, I'm anything that's a, that is a misdemeanor or felony charge, the prosecutor could then make a motion to the court and bring back that suspended sentence for up to six months. It can also bring back the suspended fine, which apparently was suspended in full. So Robert gets to walk away from this with not having to actually pay any money to the state, although you did have a private attorney, Robert, that you hired. Uh, do you mind sharing what uh, what you paid uh, him, or was that something you signed an agreement to not uh, tell anybody? Oh uh, No, I actually uh, gave Jared uh, a $500 deposit and originally it was going to be $3,500, but he's going to get back in contact with me, and then we're going to work out. He's going to shave with some of that off. Yeah. All right, so he's going to shave some of that off. Let's say it comes down to $3,000. So basically, 
you were driving somewhere peacefully, you hadn't harmed anybody else, some, some people arrested you, they kidnapped you, took you away from your life, and now you've paid an attorney who is a very nice guy. I, you know, I've met Jared in the past. He's one of the, the fair, fairly good drug attorneys up here uh, in New Hampshire. He, uh, he gets to walk away with $3,000 of your hard-earned money, and uh, you get to avoid a, a small jail sentence. You, and you're feeling good about the whole thing. Yeah, I don't really have a problem with it because, like I said, even though I paid you know the attorney money, I still didn't have to pay any. Fun. I didn't go to the state. That much and is that true works for me. That much is true. Robert, thank you for the call. Thanks for the update tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Drive safe out there. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. You know, when I was a younger man, like wandering around the internet looking for trouble, I used to go and visit these cop blogs. And one advice, a uh, piece of advice that I saw in one of the forums was always pull people over for those trivial things because that's how you get the big busts. Mm-hmm, and I guess true. maybe, you know, Robert, this nice man who was doing up until the part where he forgot, I guess, that he had this in his glove compartment, all the right things, uh, that would be a big bust or a bigger bust than just, you know, writing somebody a whatever $20 ticket for having snow on their um, driver's, uh, their license plate. Absolutely right? true. Yeah. And I wonder, is it probable cause once they see the uh, prescription that they can ask to, to further investigate the prescription that I would on like it? To know. I would like to know that as well. If there's any law enforcement officers out there who can answer that question, if just spotting a bottle of prescription pills, is that enough to justify a further search? Of that, mm. uh, or is it just something that people just consent to? And in in Robert's case, he gave that cop the pills. So in Robert's case, what he should have done was not taken the pills out of the glove box in the first place. But people do things that they consider to be innocent activities because they feel innocent. Yeah. He didn't yeah. hurt anybody. He was being pulled over for a ticket. He's just taking stuff out of his glove box, looking for his car registration. Oh, let me take a look at that, sir. And he hands them over. 855 450 free. There's, I think, more to say about this. We can come back to the secret here in a moment. But this, I've got a conspiracy theory, Brett, and I think that uh, I'm, gonna, I'm very interested in your thoughts All on right. this when we return on Free Talk Live. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. 
Go to MineThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MineThings.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. A heroic broken sewage pipe floods Congress with waste. Johnson & Johnson introduces new leave-in Q-tips. This Thursday, local youth Andrew Robillard told reporters he had no idea why he couldn't wear his Iron Man costume to his grandfather's funeral. Robillard, whose grandfather passed away this week after complications from a stroke, vented his frustration to reporters and noted that his grandpa, quote, probably wouldn't even care if he dressed like Iron Man at the funeral. Iron Man is awesome. I want to wear my Iron Man suit. I am a And in tech news, a news website refers to its users' ceaseless exchange of racial slurs as a discussion. In other news, Guinness World Records promotes the man who can lift 27 pounds with his tongue to editor-in-chief. Thursday's cry is moved up to Wednesday due to a scheduling conflict, and a family watches in silence as dad checks out the waitress. This is the Onion News Network. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what you want. Just dial toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Don't forget our website, freetalklive.com. So LeaderAmp is a program to help you to become more persuasive. This is really valuable in your life. Everybody's constantly trying to, you know, to persuade people of things, whether it's in the office, uh, you know, trying to convince people that your way of doing things is going to be better than the old way of doing things. Or as a salesperson, convincing people that your product or service is, um, you know, well, really what you need to do as a salesperson is convince them of the value of your product and service, not that it's better than the competition. And sometimes you have to compare to the competition, but generally the the skill of persuading people is among the most valuable skills one can have. And Dr. S- uh, Matt Barney, uh, the founder of LeaderAmp, has coached and taught thousands of successful leaders around the world for the last 20 years using, using the latest science um, surrounding uh, what works in the area of uh, development. Dr. Barney has drafted blueprints for a new smartphone application to measure each person and tailor a customized development plan and that and you can have some interactivity through your cell phone, on your computer, inside a social networking group. You can see where you're on the chart compared to people, other people who are using the program, people who uh, – historical figures, that kind of thing, uh, chart success. And this is really what it comes down to is you have to know where to grow in order to grow. A lot of the advice out there, not useful at all. This is, um, I, I think, a big step forward from sort of the old – there's still people just writing books for $25. You can go to their Indiegogo campaign and get evaluated. That's the cost of a hardcover book. You can buy the next self-help book or you can get involved in this program. And I think that it's, it's hugely valuable. So pre-order at Indiegogo at leaderamp.freetalklive.com. We shortened up the URL for you by just putting it there. Leaderamp.freetalklive.com and amp your leadership. All right, so we've got a couple of topics to get back to, including the secret. Uh, but I wanted to, and Mark, you've apparently been threatened by the city of Keene over your dog. Uh, we'll get into that here in a moment. That Animal. You, just, you revealed to us in, okay, you're whatever. Uh, you revealed that to us here uh, during one of the breaks, so we'll get to that too. But uh, Robert in Vermont called to follow up on a couple calls he'd made previously where he explained to us he'd been arrested for having some prescription pills in his glove box, he took them out during a pullover for you know some nonsense of having snow on a license plate up in uh, Walpole, New Hampshire, and he uh, was arrested, charged with a felony, and also uh, whatever the you know violation is for having snow on your license plate. 
And turns out that they tested the product, uh, the pharmaceutical that was in a some sort of a container. It wasn't actually in a prescription pill container. It was just some pills found during a, a house cleanout uh, that his granddaughter found, and he took from her. So they tested these pills, the state did, and they found that they were not a narcotic scheduled substance, not a prohibited uh, class of substance like, say, marijuana or uh, you know, other prescription narcotics, certain ones like opiates, uh, hydrocodone, oxycodone, things like that. So it wasn't one of those, but it was still a prescription medication. It was some sort of anti-inflammatory prescription medication. And so because of that, he uh, was recharged with a misdemeanor instead of a felony because it's not scheduled, so it's not a felony charge. But again, still no victim, no crime. There was nobody who was harmed in this uh, process. Only Robert was the victim of the state's aggression in this case. And it seems to me like that would be a great case to take in front of a jury. Now, I know juries are really terrible at, at coming out with pro-freedom uh, jury decisions. Right. We've seen this over and over again where, where activists, whether they're liberty activists, occupiers, whatever, they've but been screwed. But he got no penalty. They've been screwed by uh, the juries. What, what are you, what are you, where are you going with that point? Robert got no penalty. Why would you want to take it to a jury if they're offering you nothing? Well, I think what he's he's talking about precedent, right? Like if this was something that would ultimately be decided by a jury. I mean, because this, this all comes out of the war I've on drugs. I've got precedent. Okay. The precedent is jurors are a bunch of uh, nimrods that do what they're told. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know what the, I, I have a pretty good idea what's going to happen if he yeah, goes I, to court. I do, too. I think we all do. I think we, would all, we all agree. I, I don't think Robert was wrong for taking the plea deal, okay? <laughs> right, it's a, okay? It was a convenient out for him. He doesn't have to go to jail. He doesn't have to pay the fine. Both jail and fine were suspended. But he still has a misdemeanor conviction on his record now. And in addition to that... Uh, he didn't do anything wrong. And when I was arrested for trespass at the uh, Superior Court here in Cheshire County, uh, there was an illegal tres- what I believed to be an illegal no trespass order placed against me and several other activists uh, banning us from this courthouse property for uh, forever. And so I went ahead and I went on the property anyway, ostensibly to go to do some business in the court with the, the probate court. And they arrested me for it. And boy, they gave me a really sweet sounding plea deal at one point. Like, you know, I, I didn't just take the first plea and later on the second plea was a $250 fine suspended or something like that. Violation level. It was a misdemeanor level uh, trespass charge. The county attorney was willing to drop it to a violation level trespass charge with like a $250 fine, all of it suspended or something, you know, something like that. Maybe it was 250 not suspended, but either way, it was... I was facing having my suspended sentence imposed on me because I'd already gone to jail on a previous charge of disorderly conduct. I had a two-year suspension time of a uh, of a nine-month suspended sentence. So I, I had nine more months in jail that could have been brought back on me if I was found guilty, even of that, uh, if I was found guilty of the, the misdemeanor, right? So they were saying, well, this would be a violation, which wouldn't unsuspend your other sentence. Am I losing anybody here? No, not okay, yet. Okay, good. So it was a tempting... Yes. Very tempting plea deal. And I told this guy, this county attorney, who's a very nice man, David Lauren, I told him, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm not going to take that offer. And uh, ended up that attorney John Meyer from Manchester took the case. He objected to the uh, trespass order in the first place, got that thrown out as unconstitutional, and uh, they dropped the charge. So I ended up not getting convicted of anything. In that case, because I didn't take the plea deal. Now, if Robert hadn't taken the plea deal in this case, he would have ended up paying even more. And so, again, Robert, I think from Robert's perspective, he's not somebody who was willing to go to court on his own to take the case on his own. He he had hired an attorney. And those guys are not cheap. This was $3,000 this attorney's charged him to hold his hand through a plea deal, which is one of the most common things attorneys do. Which is, which, um, you know, this would be my critique of the situation is that the system is set up by lawyers, who do you think lawmakers are, to benefit lawyers. This is part of my conspiracy theory. Right. This is the conspiracy theory. And I don't think it's terribly conspiratorial. I mean, rent-seeking behavior isn't exactly considered conspiratorial. If you don't know what rent-seeking means, it's 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 people that pro- don't produce anything going, um, you know, and leeching money, essentially. Um, I'm sure some economist has a better terminology for it than I do. But that's what it is. It's just rent-seeking behavior. What a surprise 
lawyers say if we write a bunch of laws, then lawyers will benefit and ultimately we will be benefiting us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, I mean, we're the only smart ones. We have to hash this stuff out without law and order. We'd all be dead. So they write a bunch of laws. Yeah, the lawyers won. That's what happened. Most conspiracies that are real involve what I would call the occulting of knowledge. Right. So look at all the knowledge, uh, you know, that Mark Stevens talks about this in Adventures in Legal Land. Right. Mm -hmm. That is occulted, hidden from uh, esoteric. It's it's esoteric. Right. And this is how most conspiracies. I mean, this is the idea of a conspiracy. You protect most people from the knowledge that a few people have or you protect that knowledge, I should say, from those people, Mm -hmm. which is why they hate it. Or one of the reasons why they hate it, when you don't hire an attorney, they really, really want to push an attorney on you. Even if you don't have the money to hire an attorney, they still want you to use their state attorney. Here, take this one. In Massachusetts, they almost force them on people, yeah. even people yeah. who don't want it. It seems like they've managed to force them to deal. Well, you don't want the attorney? Well, here, have him anyway, and he'll be your attorney. Uh, what, what is it called when they sit next to you, but they're not actually your attorney? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's like your advisor or whatever. Right. Uh, so we'll, we'll come back with more here because the, the my conspiracy theory is adding on to what Marks already pointed out. Yes, the laws are written by lawyers for the benefit of lawyers. That's who's benefiting from this case against Robert is the defense attorney in this case. He's the one who's walking away. Not with a bad guy, just I mean he protected him, but that's it's lawyers helping lawyers. Right. So the question is what would have happened had Robert not hired the attorney? We're coming up. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Hey everyone, have you heard about the no-no hair removal device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host Cheryl for no-no hair removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my no-no. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No-no has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the no-no, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible no-no hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com.
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control here and share your thoughts on the legal land conspiracy. Were laws created by lawyers for the benefit of lawyers? That one seems obvious. But I'll get into a little bit more detail on where I wanted to take that here in a moment. And you're welcome to chime in here at 855-450-FREE or bring up whatever's on your mind. You can also join us via Skype. Skype username for you is lrn.fm. I have an uh, an announcement for the smart people. Not not you, Ian. Um, There's a treasure hunt going on. A treasure hunt, uh, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. So what you've got to do is prove theorems at mat- mathgate.info, and you can be rewarded with Bitcoins. So um, learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Now, there's even better for those that are interested in, in, in secrecy and anonymity. Mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor. Hmm. Prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Bitcoins that have never been never been tainted or sullied. They aren't sullied by you, so that people don't know that they're attached to you. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. People are finding your Bitcoins, smart people, smart math people. So you have to go find them now. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. This sounds amazing. Yes, it does. I, yeah, I just love that Free Talk Live, uh, that uh, the... The, the the person who who paid for this completely anonymous I've got to say really I have they they uh, demanded they sent me a message through some kind of anonymizing thing on my email no, told kidding. me to hook through some anonymizing service that I sort of had to what da- was that what was the anonymizing What's, yeah. service I'll have to look I'm just curious real quick it's uh, right here on my Is it desktop crypto cat it is not CryptoCat. I do like CryptoCat, and I go in there and I talk about almost nothing. BitMessage. <laughs> ah, yeah, I that went, one uses the Bitcoin protocol. Yep, I talked through there and got everything hooked up. I have no idea who this wow, is. Wow, that's really cool. It is so cool. But that, the Bitcoins, you know, were, we were paid in Bitcoins. Bitcoins are real. Yeah, the Bitcoins yeah. are real. <laughs> I assume I didn't really, uh, it's, I, I send them, my wife does the accounting. <laughs> uh, so, wow. So you go, you solve math theorems, and you get Bitcoins. Yes. I don't know what a math theorem is, but for the people that do, <laughs> they're probably interested in this. I think if you really applied yourself, Ian, you could do it. You know, I was it's pretty proofs. good. At, you never did proofs? I was pretty good at, what the hell all that is? Uh, I was pretty good at math up through pre-calculus. So I, you, did, I did, you did proofs then. I did good. Yes. In, I did well in, uh, <laughs> in algebra. Yes, you did. And, uh, and then I just Not basically stopped caring at the whole pre-calc thing. Did not do like well. Right at an, an, um, at uh, pre-calc. So not calculus, but pre-calc. You said yeah, you I did pretty good up to pre-calc. Yeah, I didn't okay. yeah, I didn't do good at pre-calc. I didn't even I get actually, that far. I, I didn't actually, even do pre-calc. I had to go back into Algebra 2 and retake Algebra 2, and after that I just didn't take any more math. So. I see. Not to say I couldn't do it. I just don't care. Anyway, but for people who can do it, there's Bitcoins out there waiting for you. Indeed. And what was the website again? Mathgate.info. Mathgate.info. I just think it's really cool that this guy bought ads with us, well, yeah, number uh, one. But, and then secondly, uh Well, he knows what kind of listeners we have. Yeah. Right? Total um, geeks. Yeah. So we're the right place for this. Yes, There are probably some other right places, but we are a right place for this. So uh, the remainder of the conspiracy theory, the first part's obvious. Lawyers... 
wrote sure. the laws. Yeah. The laws benefit the lawyers, both sides, right? Because as long as the uh, the state's bringing charges, there will always be jobs for state prosecutors. And as long as charges are being brought, there will always be jobs for, uh, for attorneys. Because as you were saying, Brett, these people know this esoteric uh, area of law, which is a very confusing place. And it was made that way on purpose. The reason why they take English words and then they redefine them to mean other things which is, you know, kind of one of the hallmarks of legalese, where the word person can mean a corporation, which, of course, has nothing to do with human beings. Uh, this is the bizarre world of legal land that we're talking about here. So they know what these uh, definitions are. They know how the system works, and they will hold your hand. As this attorney did with Robert in Vermont, he held Robert's hand through a uh, plea deal, one of the simplest processes that is offered to every defendant out there. It was held his hand, and now he's going to have to pay $3,000 for the privilege of that. He Now he's not going to pay anything to the state, and he was happy about that. Okay. And, and if you can walk away from a situation where you've been bilked out of uh, your freedom and $3,000 and feel happy, that's a real testament to, assist to the system they've created. Agreed. Yeah. So the question I have, and the conspiracy theory really comes into this one. If Robert had not taken the plea deal, if Robert had not hired the attorney would the offer have been as good now the thing with the legal land is and the life that we're in is we don't get to play the alternate reality and see what would have actually happened so the speculation the conspiracy theory is is that because he hired the lawyer that there's a gentleman's agreement amongst attorneys i absolutely believe and that this. is that if I, you hire an attorney you will be given a better plea deal offer well, yes. in the case. Well, let's let's look at it for a second. Um, the fact is, is that people like nice people who play by the rules, and people dislike a holes, mm -hmm. right? I mean, this is a sort of truism. Does that sound accurate about human behavior? Yeah. Nobody yeah. wants to do something nice for an a-hole? Non-controversial. When, you, when yeah. you walk into court and you say, no, I don't want a lawyer to a bunch of lawyers. I don't trust lawyers. I think they're, you know, whatever whatever it communicates to them. You don't have to say mm -hmm. anything beyond that. No, I would like not like an attorney. I will represent myself. The lawyers think you're an a-hole. Mm. And yeah, absolutely. They want to discourage this sort of behavior, so they're going to... Well, yeah. even if nobody's going to be looking, we're going to need to discourage this behavior because somebody's in the courtroom. But they can't come right out and say that. They can't tell no. you that you'll get a better deal if you hire an attorney. So all we can do is really speculate. Is there a gentleman's agreement between attorneys to do this? I think that uh, it's fair speculation. What do you think, Brett? Uh, I don't know. I've, I've had some experience with this. I actually had... Um, I used to play racquetball back in the day with a uh, district attorney, prosecutor, mm -hmm. and uh, I lived in Vermont. I've never, I've never told anyone the details of the story before, but I'm going to have to tell them to get through the story. Right. I got a DWI, and it was actually the second one that I got. I, I had gotten one, I think, when I was like 18. And You're getting I got pretty one. good at getting them. Well, you know, they say the third <laughs> is like, that's when all everything happens. Um but I thought that I was going to, because I had this relationship with this district attorney, that he would play ball. I mean, I had a lawyer, and they were friends. Mm -hmm. the, my lawyer and the district attorney, like, I played racquetball with the guy. They're friends. I'm like, this is going to be great. Right. You play racquetball with the district attorney, and you're going up um, to, in front of him with a DUI, right? He didn't recuse himself? No. Okay. And well, as, well, see, that's the thing is like there were a bunch of district attorneys like st sitting at the district attorney table. Yeah. So it was, it, and they would kind of like shuffle in and out, you know, like they they would have different cases, right? Yep. So it was hard to say what exactly was going to happen. But my lawyer walked up to him and said, "Look, this is a DWI two, which carried jail time and a huge fine." He said, "I want to plead it down to a one." And I'm watching this from the back of the room, and he looks back, the, my racquetball buddy, mm -hmm. and he looks at me, and he looks at my lawyer, and he shakes his head and hands him the file. He says, no way. No, we're not doing that. No deal for you, buddy. So then, I swear to God this is a true story, just to show you how crazy this world is. My lawyer comes back to me. He goes, that didn't work. Um, let's come with me. 
and he takes me down the hall to another courtroom that's completely empty. Mm-hmm. I, I Again, I want to reiterate, I swear to God this happened. The courtroom is empty. We go in. Suddenly, a judge appears, another district attorney, and a stenographer. And he says to this other district attorney, plead this down to a one. It's pleaded down to a one. I lost my license for 60 days instead of something like three years. The fine oh was suspended, gosh. and that was it. The lawyer said to me, he goes, I said, well, how much? How many thousands of dollars do I owe you, sir? You know, And he said, yeah, that was like, uh, that hardly took any time. Buy a... Um, Gift certificate to blah 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 restaurant downtown because I like to take people out on Friday. Make it three hundred fifty bucks. Wow! I want to come back talk more about that. Dave's on the line in Nevada. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Dave. Dave in Nevada, going once. Oh, I've got it muted. Hello? Let's try it again. Go, Dave. Hey. <laughs> hey guys, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, well, kind of. I wanted to comment on the on the case and then um, chime in on the. The whole, uh, you know, conspiracy theory thing. Mm-hmm. But basically, what I was going to say is what you ended up saying, Ian. That he, you know, sitting there saying that he's he's happy after having to pay a lawyer three grand, getting arrested for something that you shouldn't even be arrested for. And you know, I think a lot of people are conditioned now to, you know, it's like it's like somebody, you know, beating you up and thanking them for not killing you. You know, it's. It's kind of kind of nuts that you you know it's just like if a if a cop you know pulls it's true you over a lot of people will thank a judge as they're walking out the door. If you had more to say, we can bring thank it back you back here. Thank you, Your Eminence. Hour two's next. You take control here, legal land, whatever you want to talk about. Free talk live. Geico presents fan mail to a pig. Dear Maxwell, I just want to say thank you for making my Geico insurance ID card digital. It's easy to find on the app. It doesn't give me paper cuts, and I always have it on hand because it's on my phone. Because of this, I finally cleaned out my glove box, which was filled with years of paper ID cards. Any thought on what I should put in my glove box now? Sincerely, Trent Patterson. Hmm, Trent, what can you put in the glove box? Here's a crazy thought. How about gloves? Digital insurance ID cards. Just a tap away on the Geico app. Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-443-7087. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus guaranteed 100% risk-free. Call 1-800-443-7087. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on earth? Most coffee at grocery stores and chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, Buzzbox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 9th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.83 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,304 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $452. Former NSA contractor Edward Snowden tells Vanity Fair about his motivation for leaking tens of thousands of secret documents, saying, Every person remembers some moment in their life where they witnessed some injustice, big or small, and looked away, because the consequences of intervening seemed too intimidating. But there's a limit to the amount of incivility and inequality and inhumanity that each individual can tolerate. 
I crossed that line, and I am no longer alone. Snowden's extensive response is part of a 20,000-word narrative in Vanity Fair's May issue by special correspondent Brian Burrow and contributing editors Susanna Andrews and Sarah Ellison. The article is the first comprehensive account, bolstered by interviews with dozens of key players, providing an inside look at how a geeky dropout from the Maryland suburbs found himself alone in a Hong Kong hotel room, releasing some of America's most carefully guarded secrets to to the world. Among the highlights of Snowden's response, on WikiLeaks he said, they run towards the risk everyone else runs away from. No other publisher in the world is prepared to commit to protecting sources, even other journalist sources, the way WikiLeaks is. And in response to the intelligence community that Snowden has a doomsday cache in his possession, Snowden retorts, who would set up a system that incentivizes others to kill them? When you purchase gold or silver from Amagi Metals using my affiliate link, gold.fppradio.com, you help fund FPP Radio News. That's gold.fppradio.com. Antiwar.com reports, U.S. military intervention in the Syrian civil war has mostly taken the form of small arms and equipment for various rebel factions, but looks to be picking up the pace dramatically as new videos came out showing U.S.-made BGM-71 TOW anti-tank missiles in rebel hands. Two different rebel factions, the Free Syrian Army and a faction allied with the Islamic Front, are claiming to have the weapons, though the U.S. is still not officially confirming that they are the direct suppliers. Saudi Arabia has been keen to supply the rebels with more and more advanced U.S.-made weapons, including TOW missiles and anti-aircraft missiles, though in the past U.S. concerns about the rebels using them on civilian targets, particularly passenger airlines, have prevented such shipments. In recent weeks, the reports have said the U.S. was less and less concerned about the shipments, preferring to see the Civil War escalate at any cost, and apparently willing to deal with the inevitable backlash when the weapons start showing up in Al-Qaeda's hands. FPP Radio News is brought to you by $6 Shirts. $6 Shirts is one of the top t-shirt companies on the web, and they want to be the t-shirt company for the Bitcoin marketplace. They actually give priority to all Bitcoin orders. Go look at their shirts. They're witty, hip, smart, and liberty-oriented. Shop $6 Shirts using my affiliate link, 6.fppradio.com, and help support FPP Radio News. That's 6.fppradio.com. Coindesk reports, Governor of the Bank of Japan, Haruhiko Karudo, has cast doubts on Bitcoin's future as a currency. He told reporters after a central bank policy meeting, without safety or stability in its value, there will be no demand. In that sense, it cannot be a currency. It is not a currency, and I don't think it is a general means of settlement. Karuto's comments, which were reported in the Economic Times, come after a nationwide shock in Japan at the bankruptcy of the now infamous exchange Mt. Gox, which was based in Tokyo, and other recent bad news for Bitcoin, such as possible fraudulent activity at Cyprus-based NEO and B. The central bank chief's mention of stability also indicates that the perceived volatility of Bitcoin is an issue of concern. Though in time, Bitcoin's volatility is likely to diminish as more merchants start accepting payments in the digital currency and it becomes less a store of value for flighty investors and more a means of buying and selling products or services. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Thomas the Tank Engine says he's a little uneasy with his broad autistic following, and a couple has a nest egg of debt to make sure they've got some money to owe down the road. This is the Onion Week in Review. Local video editor James Korf told reporters Wednesday that despite having said goodbye over 10 minutes ago, his friend, Michael Woodward, still remained active on Gchat and had shown no signs of leaving. If it were yellow, it would mean that 
he hasn't been on the computer for a little while, or if it was red, it would mean he doesn't want to talk, but it's green. I can tell. I can see it right there. Korf later said that he felt briefly relieved when Woodward's chat logo turned orange, but was once again dejected when it became green within seconds. And in this week's op-ed pages, a high school guidance counselor laments the fact that no one in his entire damn school has been molested. In other news, a bed bug feels bad for an area man, but a bug's gotta eat. A development exec wants to see what, where, and how that would look, live, and play out. And a man at the gym is just watching TV. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want toll free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And we're launching into the second hour of the program. You can create the content on the front page of the website at freetalklive.com. More coming up, by the way, about the legal conspiracy theory that we've uh, been talking about here. Uh, And Brett's just mind-blowingly amazing court story. But if you go to freetalklive.com and you have something you want to share with us, but maybe you don't want to call in, maybe you'd prefer to stay behind the uh, the safety of your keyboard, you can easily submit content right to the front page of the website. Go to freetalklive.com. You do need a Reddit account and a freetalklive.com account, and then you take a. There's a real simple process of linking the two accounts together, and then from that point on, it'll be easy for you to submit content and vote on other people's submissions. You can vote up what you like and down what you don't at freetalklive.com. Brett is here from the School Sucks Project. Schoolsucksproject.com yeah. is the website. Now, uh, Brett, you were just telling us an amazing story about your DUI charge yeah. where you had an attorney. The attorney couldn't actually cut the cut the deal that he wanted with one of the district attorneys. Yes. So he went to a different district attorney and got the deal that he, that he wanted, and it all happened within a period of an hour. He billed me for an hour, so that's how much time it took. Now, this was over 10 years ago, so or about 10 years ago. So something did happen that I'm not recalling, right? Because it wasn't just like he, when the district attorney I played racquetball with said no, it wasn't like he took out a magic wand and we were in another courtroom. There was some kind of discussion that he must have had with somebody else. But I don't know what it was, and I don't know how this happened. I had never heard of anything or seen anything before or since that even resembled what had happened there. If you've got any uh, bizarre legal land stories that you want to share, you're welcome to call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Let's go back to Dave in Nevada. He had some further comment on either that and or uh, the Robert in Vermont case where Robert took a plea deal on a possession of, uh, of not narcotics, but possession of prescription pills or transportation, rather, thereof, uh, and is now getting a suspended sentence. He's not having to actually pay the fine. It's been a suspended fine and a suspended jail term. Uh, Go ahead, Dave, with your thoughts. Yeah, just to kind of add to what I was saying, I mean, it's basically like people now are are brainwashed into thinking things that aren't bad are, that they're— you know, guilty of something when they didn't do anything. Well, no, Robert in Vermont I mean, knows. I mean, I get, I get what you're saying. You're right about that. Like, there were guys that I was in jail with who, even though they hadn't hurt anybody, they were just there for a drug charge, they still kind of were verbally beating themselves up as though they were a bad guy. Well, cops do this same trick that uh, that, that occurred with, with Robert, too, is, is uh, I've had a situation where they're, they're like, look, I clocked you at uh, 17 miles an hour over. I'm going to drop it down a cell. And put you in the 10 to 14 miles an hour over range. I'm going to save you $150 and uh, won't be as big of a deal. Here you go, son. Have a nice day. And I'm like, thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs> and you thank guys, you. you high five. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. You have a great day, officer. <laughs> you know, like, but I don't I've think had that, that situation happen and I've felt that way. While I agree with your statement, Dave, that a lot of people do agree, they do have this belief that just because it's a violation of the law that it's somehow wrong. I know that Robert doesn't think that. He knows he didn't hurt anybody. He knows there was no victim to his so-called crime of possessing some anti-inflammatory drugs that he did not have a prescription for. But what else did you have to say? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm not saying maybe him personally. I'm just saying in general and just exactly like what Mark said, they they kind of twist it around and then you'll, you'll walk away like, oh, yeah, that cop's a nice cop. It's like, no, not really. He just, you know, can maybe compared to, to others. And going to court or being charged with a crime 
is, and I think this is part of the conspiracy as well, it's a no-win situation. It's, you know, That's right. how bad is it going to be? You know, because no matter what, you've already been arrested. You have to pay a lawyer. You know, maybe you spent some time in jail. You have to go through that whole situation. So even if you're found not guilty, it, I mean— that's better than obviously being found guilty, but no matter what, it's a no-win situation. Yeah, you never get your and, and time back. That and that's one of the things right. that Mark Stevens talks about in his book, Adventures in Legal Land, is that every encounter with a bureaucrat, not just the justice system, but every encounter with a bureaucrat for the most part, uh, you, you're losing. You're at the very least losing your time. You're losing your money in many of the of these cases. In the case of the justice system, you can lose your freedom as well. Uh, but if you walk away the victor, you still don't get compensated. Not you know, ninety percent of the cases, you will not be compensated for your time and your effort that you had to put in in becoming the victor uh, in that case. Dave, thanks for your call and thoughts tonight. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's the toll free number here tonight. Mark is currently under threat from the city of Keene for a dog license violation. And thus far, Mark, you have sent an email back in response to their threat. Not an email, no. It was oh, a, I'm sorry, uh, yeah. a letter. It's a letter. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're they going wrote to be me sending a letter. So you have taken the time. So even if they were to toss this out uh, tomorrow as a result of the letter, which you'll read for us here in a little bit, you'll still lose the amount of time it took you to compose and print and and mail out that letter. We'll get back into that. Jason's with us in Hurricane Utah, listening to KZNU. Hey, Jason. Hey, gentlemen. Hey, uh, I learned earlier that apparently failing algebra is a libertarian trait that I share with uh, at least one of you, so uh, that's good to <laughs> I know. I passed algebra. I just, uh, oh, wait, Brett, it was, was it you that didn't go through algebra? That's the first you? time you didn't. No, I I made it through algebra and algebra it. too. I didn't. I never was made it, it to pre-calc. We had a, a senior course called street math. <laughs> that sounds up my alley. <laughs> which which no 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 wait a minute. Is that's that where not you're right. weighing out kilos no. and no ounces? that's that sounds too. Uh, there there was no course <laughs> called street math. There was a course called street law. It was survey math, and they told us not to take it. They're like, it's not college track. It's a 300 level course. You know, 100 being the best like college track uh, course. Never heard of it. Uh, that's, that's how they do it in New Hampshire. And me and all my friends who said, what if we all did it? And we all just signed up for this class called survey math and uh, skipped whatever the senior college track uh, math class was. Mm -hmm. And it worked? Uh, well, we all got into college and we had fun in uh, where not much was expected of us, but yes. <laughs> Developed a, a, a dependency and a 12, needed a 12-step program while in college. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Go ahead, Jason. Hey, uh, I just wanted to thank you guys. Um, I know you guys were, as far as I know, probably one of the first people to actually give some national exposure to the Bundy Range War. I called in, I think, on Monday and talked to you guys about it. But um, I wanted to come to you guys because you're kind of – I've learned a lot from listening to you guys over the last year or so about how to have effective uh, activism. So what we've got down there now is a lot of really angry people, you know, ranchers, cowboys at the federal government. Mm -hmm. Getting a little chippy down there. They've just posted some videos recently of a woman getting picked up and slammed by a ranger, and there's a lot of Whoa. pushing, shoving. It's 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 a little frightening, I think, because somebody's going to get hurt uh, for sure. And you know, how where where are these videos well being posted? I have yet to see any of the videos from uh, from the so-called range war happening in Nevada. Yeah. Yeah, if you go to – just go to, like, Facebook and type in, like, the Bundy um, Bundy Range War, and it'll come up with, like – that's another thing that's actually scary is you'll get some – some groups have actually created, like, a uh, militia. I'm going down there with my guns to fight mm -hmm. the federal government, which, you know, yeah. probably is agent provoc provocateurs from the FBI. There's but a good chance there's of There's a lot of those, too. Yeah, I think so. But it's a little frightening if you look at that on Facebook because there's a lot of – and these guys are getting a critical mass now. I mean, thousands of people are liking these pages. Like, I've been tracking it because it's like 20 minutes away from us here, mm -hmm. and we've got kind of a stake in it. But I wanted to just um, get you guys' opinion on how to effectively stage a protest like that because what I see down there is good on one level because people are getting involved. But it's yep. counterproductive yep. because they're kind of just standing around screaming at them, yelling at them, cussing at them, which, you know, is not going to end well. And it's playing right into the hands of the federal government. Like, hey, look, there's a bunch of inbred, idiot, right-wing conspiracy kooks. That's why we had to shoot them or tase them or whatever. You know, so when I'll you get off say the line, what would make it effective, effective, what do you want to affect? Well, I think I think effective is getting the word out for freedom and liberty. Like you guys do such a good job with. I hear you guys talking about what's going on in Keene. Like you guys are affecting change in a positive way, nonviolently. 
Um, you're not, you know, getting up in anybody's face, but you're you're firm depends in who you ask. and asserting your right. <laughs> First of all, it depends who you ask. I think this is an interesting question, uh, and let's talk further about it. Stand by, Jason. We'll bring you back here in a moment. 855 450 free. What can be done in this range war situation or in any activist situation where things are heated uh, What that'll help be more effective at communicating the ideas of liberty as opposed to just shouting or uh, getting into fights, shoving, getting arrested? 855 450 free. You can answer the question if you'd like, or we'll do it here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Amanda Bosold here from Midas Resources. Today, April 4th, 2014, gold opened at 1297.60. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1344.77, 672.38 for a half ounce, or 336.19 for a quarter ounce. Again, that's 1344.77, 672.38, and 336.19. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme. Your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is 
Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you'd like. Dial in toll-free here at 855 450 free. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. So feel free to do that and join the conversation, whether you want to talk about uh, crazy adventures in legal land or uh, something we could come back to, The Secret, which we barely touched on in the first hour of the show, uh, which originally started from a discussion that we uh, we brought up the 30 things you shouldn't do, and we were only on thing number five. Uh, so all of that is possible, or you can bring up whatever you would like. Coming up this summer, the Porcupine Freedom Festival is happening in June, and Free Talk Live is planning on being there, broadcasting live every single night. We'll look forward to seeing you there. If it's your first Porcupine Freedom Festival, you're in for a real treat. If you've been to a Porcupine Freedom Festival before, a.k.a. Porkfest, then you know the reasons to come back. And the main reason, for me at least, is the people. To be around over 1,500 liberty-oriented people, people who love the ideas of freedom, many of whom are already members of the Free State Project, or rather participants in the Free State Project, some of whom have made the move, as we all have done, others who are considering making the move, they are planning a move, uh, or some are considering joining the Free State Project and they want to check it out. Well, the Porcupine Freedom Festival is the place to do all of those things. Go to porkfest.com. I believe it's June 22nd through the 29th. And you can get all the details on the event and get the early bird tickets. Uh, Pork Fest, actually, I don't know if they're still early birds, but uh, they're not the same price as you'll pay if you just show up the day of. How about that? The pre order tickets, I guess, is what you want to call them at Pork Fest, P O R C F E S T dot com. It's a great event. You don't want to miss it because we're on with Jason in uh, Hurricane Utah. He's got a question about effective activism. He's under the impression that we might know a thing or two about effective activism being here in New Hampshire where there's all this activism going on. And uh, what's happening out of his way is this so-called range war between the rancher. We talked about this a few days ago on Free Talk Live. And in fact, we're going to have a member of the Bundy family, the rancher's name, is Cliven Bundy. The uh, property in question has been in the family for generations. They've been they've been grazing this land, which is also now public land, run by the Bureau of Land Management. The BLM wants a bunch of money from these people, which they've been refusing to pay. They've instead taken the money they would have paid the BLM and actually used it to improve the the public land. Hmm. Uh, so they're basically saying, well, you know, screw you. We're going to graze this land like we've done for generations. And the BLM saying, we're going to take all your cows and you're going to prison if you get in our way and you need to pay up. That's my understanding of the situation. They've now brought snipers out. They've now arrested one of his sons. Apparently we're going to have another uh, of his sons or maybe it's the same son. I'm not really sure. But one of his sons is going to be on free talk live this weekend on our Saturday edition of the show. So what, that's coming what, up. What state is this in, Ian? Nevada. Now, it's. I think it bears mentioning that out west, in Nevada specifically, um, that the federal government owns a lot of land. Sure. Two-thirds west of the Mississippi, right? Um, yeah, and Nevada is even larger than that. It's mm. a, a very large portion of Nevada is owned by the federal yes. government. And by that, I mean they just didn't open it up for uh, homesteading. They, they kept it for themselves. And... This is so it makes uh, land ownership kind of a, a different thing out there than it is sort of in the east. Because you know, one of the the first thoughts, uh, my thoughts as an Easterner, is look, well, it's the federal government's land. I mean, you know, just because they've been letting you graze on it for a hundred years doesn't mean that uh, you can graze on it for the next hundred. But when the federal government claims everything, when the king claims the whole forest is your, as they as his, then and there's no place for you to hunt. What exactly, you know, this was this was a big deal a few hundred years ago. Is the the nobles claim all the forest for themselves? Yeah. Where where do we to plant and hunt? Yeah, but this is Nevada in America, yeah. and you don't know how many UFOs they're trying to hide out there. <laughs> uh, let's make sure Jason gets a chance to get back in here. He had a question about uh, what could be effective activism because what you're seeing, Jason, and you're there nearby in Utah. What you're seeing is is video footage of, uh, let's just call them yokels, coming down and uh, they're threatening people with guns. And I'm not talking about the federal agents. I'm talking about people coming out there claiming they're going to form a militia and that they're going to stop the uh, the feds with blood if necessary. And you're saying you don't feel well, like this. I, I don't think that's necessarily true. The Bundy, the Bundy family is a really good family. I know 
I know a couple of them, and they have gone out of their way to tell people not to bring guns and mm-hmm. not to do things like that. But However, it's happening anyway. As, as you guys, yeah, as you know, there's probably some people that are full of like a lot of Toby Keith songs and things like that that don't want to come down there and put a boot in somebody's behind. And, you know, that's, that's the people that kind of ruin it for everybody else. But the Bunny family has done a great job. I guess my... my oh, I wasn't indicting the family. I, I want to make that clear. I haven't heard anything about well, violence from them. I did hear that maybe this guy's willing to die over his, his property. Yeah, but, there's, some, there's, some groups on, there's some groups on Facebook. And like I said, I tend to believe a lot of them are probably government agents. But they're creating these groups like No More Wacos. Uh, we're coming down there with their guns, their militia group. Uh, I just got on Facebook and checked out, and it was a little, it was a little interesting. And now, are uh, they but, actually showing but, up, or is it just a bunch of talk on Facebook? I mean, have you seen? It's, it's a bunch of Facebook. It's a bunch of Facebook talk. Yeah, right. We're so, actually headed down there tomorrow to go down and see what's going on. If you don't mind, give us away. a call uh, with an update after you kind of get apprised on the situation and like, let us know what things are like on the ground there. So yeah, I think there's going to be a big division between the talkers and the doers in this case, and how many of the people that are online sure. talking about violence will actually show up and perform any violent acts is another question. But either way, the question was really effective activism. How can you use this opportunity of tyranny to spread the ideas of freedom? And I think that the people who have the most opportunity to do this are Cliven and his family. Uh, Presuming they are liberty-oriented people, I don't know if they are or not. A lot of people just want freedom for themselves. They want freedom in their life. They don't really care about others. I'm not going to say if I know. No, they under... They understand they understand law, natural law, and all that very, very well, and they're very educated. So I on, talked to uh, uh, Cliven's idea. son today, Ryan, and he said that they're yeah. overwhelmed with uh, press requests, I and bet. right now right. it's very difficult for him to keep track of all the different requests. So that could be a good form of activism. A volunteer as their manager, uh, come in there and you know set a schedule for these guys. Because when I said what day and what time I wanted him to come on, he said yes. And he said, just call me at that time. And that was when he started telling me about that. He didn't even know all the different interviews he had lined up. So for all I know, he's double booked them. Uh, and some people are going to have to get canceled. And who knows, it's, it can be a mess, especially when you got call after call no, coming in. That's good. So that's, that's one good, idea, uh, like, you know, helping with the logistics oh, like of the behind the scenes, making them more effective spokespeople would be something that you could do. Yeah, the very best thing you can do in this circumstance is just getting the word out through the media. The more these folks look like, um, you know, the, the, the more their face is put out there and their voices put out there and they're talking a calm and reasonable fashion about why they, you know, presenting their case, why they're right. Because this is going to be won or lost in the court of cu- public opinion. After after that, I think that it's going to be won or lost in the real court. That honestly, this you know a good a good attorney at some point is going to be attracted to this, and you want the right one because they're all going to say they can do it. Um, and that's the the next best bet after after the the federal government doesn't back down if there's an, if there's enough press. Um, I'm so not... you can get more press by sending out press releases too. Oh, yeah. So having somebody do a writing sort of job, write up some press releases, update the press on your side of what's happening. The Facebook page is a great place to do the press release. Every inquiry that you get from the press as far as interviews should go on an email list as well. Uh, Thanks, Jason, for the call. Keep us in the loop. There's more coming up here. If you've got a suggestion, call in with it. It's Free Talk Live. For years, you've been hearing about Herbal Healer Academy and how it's remained the leader in effective alternative and natural medicine and education. But how can they continue to hold that title for years on end? The answer is high quality and huge selection. Just visit HerbalHealer.com and shop online or request a free catalog. You're bound to find the alternative you're looking for. Did you know that Herbal Healer carries the latest, safest, and effective weight loss products? You can also count on Herbal Healer for the largest selection of safe and natural supplements just for children. And don't forget your pets. Herbal Healer even has natural mineral supplements for all your animals, including horses, cows, and birds. Take a peek at their online calendar, and you're sure to find everything you need and maybe something you didn't realize you needed. Visit HerbalHealer.com, and don't forget to sign up for the free Herbal Healer newsletter. HerbalHealer.com, working with the power of nature. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. 
The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the range war. It's apparently happening in Nevada. It's with family versus the federal government. Family of ranchers that have been there for a long time, since before the Bureau of Land Management, apparently, according to... Cliven Bundy, the uh, the main man behind the household, they are being threatened. Uh, there are military men, uh, men with uh, sniper rifles. The federal government has brought in. They brought in cowboys, hired guns to come in and take the family's cows from them, and they are just basically trying to destroy these people's lives. And all of it is supposedly to protect some sort of tortoise, which nobody's actually seen on this particular plot of land, and. And the idea that the cows are somehow dangerous to the tortoise is pretty ridiculous, from what I understand. So that's the status on that. We're going to have one of the Bundy family members on the show this weekend on the Saturday show. So hopefully uh, that will go well. But we're continuing to take your calls, and you can share your thoughts here at 855 450 free. If you care about your online privacy, you need to know about Pro XPN. What is it? It's a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data, meaning that it your information is protected. Right now, it's not. If you're not using ProXPN, your internet service provider probably knows every website you're visiting. They're probably logging this information for up to five years in some cases. They're probably logging every search that you enter. You can stop that from happening by getting ProXPN and getting started with it right now. 
It only takes you a moment to go and download the software at proxpn.com slash FTL. It works for Windows. It works for Mac. If you've got an iOS or Android device, you can get a version of ProXPN for that. Plus, if you're a Linux user, setup's a little different for Linux users, but it's easy to get it started with proxpn.com slash FTL. If you're a Linux user, you do need to, uh, to email them for uh, support on how to get your system working with ProXPN. But nobody can track you or spy on you when you're using ProXPN. And it's just an amazing service that's so affordable. When you're ready to sign up for their premium package, you get unlimited bandwidth with that. You can select your server of choice around the world to which you connect. And uh, you also can do private torrenting with their premium package. You can get the, uh, the deal that we're offering, which is 20% off of the price of that premium account for the lifetime of the plan. For the lifetime. As long as you have the account, you get 20% off. And if you use uh, that, this code, FTL20, on the annual plan, it breaks the price down to 5 bucks a month for ProXPN.com slash FTL. Just go there, get started tonight for free. And when you're ready to upgrade to premium, use promo code FTL20 at proxpn.com slash FTL. There's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. You have nothing to lose except your privacy. Daniel is with us in Oakland, California. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Brett, and Mark. Hi, I got an idea for uh, what uh, an effective protest about this situation. Effective activism was the, the request uh, from our previous caller. What would be effective activism to spread the ideas of freedom surrounding the situation, the so-called range war developing in Nevada? Go ahead. So the feds want to get all these cows off the land. Mm -hmm. And there's a bunch of sympathetic uh, ranchers who support this family and want to help out. So rather than show up with their guns, they should show up with their cows. Just start backing up the trucks and unloading all the cows flood the land with cows, the feds will be knee-deep in crap, and <laughs> it'll take a lot longer to round up all the cows, and it won't. nobody will get shot. What are they going to do, gun down the cows? And, and it would just be really funny. And that that would be, be pretty funny. Uh, pretty it funny. would, it would, it would, it would be, be like... Up. It'd be like cow the civil disobedience. Up on the evening news. Yeah, it would be guerrilla warfare with battle cattle. It would be awesome. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Daniel. I appreciate it. Eight All they need is one picture of one of these tortoises covered in a cow pie, yep. struggling mm. you know, through cow poo. And years ago, <laughs> wasn't there a big uh, dust up in Congress over a very controversial turtle bridge? Does anyone remember? I don't the recall. Turtle bridge. It turned into a song. There was a song, the Songify, you know, the auto-tuning guys, mm, they made okay. a song about the Turtle Bridge. No. And there was a big debate over building a bridge for turtles. They have a salamander, they were doing salamander tunnels here in New Hampshire was one of the proposals. Okay. So certainly that's something, I mean, I would want to know how much land we're talking about and how many cows are on it mm -hmm. and how many tortoises, is that the... Is that Tortai? The, tortai. I think it's probably tortoises. Tortoises. Okay. That's, yeah. Well, for one, how many, there, how many always, of those they're trying to protect? You could always forget the going with the octopi thing. Forget it. It generally isn't. It, no, yeah. no. It's just, it, you know, they're, they're trying, if, you know, as the, the world gets smaller with communication, people are trying to uh, homogenize the language. And really, it's not a good idea. People struggling with this. Should I be saying rhinoceri or rhinoceroses? <laughs> I don't know. You know just go, go ahead and add the yes on the end. Yeah, okay. So uh, effective activism ideas, uh, we were kind of focusing on publicity, uh, You know, writing press releases, getting the word out, organizing the media requests, making sure that you don't miss an interview, and, uh, and getting the word out to the public as well. Why not set up a website or a blog or something like that? Maybe they already have this. Maybe there already is a, an official Facebook channel of some sort, or, or they've got a website. But well, maybe we could back up a little bit, too. So we say the point of activism, at least in this case, is publicity. Right. Well, the question was, what would be effective to spread the ideas of freedom? That was that uh, was his question. Okay, so spreading the ideas of freedom. So, what ideally would like to stop? I think people would like to stop the aggression of the state. But how likely is that? Oh, uh, sure, sure. In the short term, it's almost impossible. So, what constitutes publicity, and is bad publicity good? You know, I yes. Why? Uh, to answer the second question first, yes, bad publicity is good so long as they get your website correct or your name spelled right uh, because it'll attract attention. 
Anything that attracts attention of more eyeballs means that more people who are like you. Remember, we were talking about being true to yourself sure. earlier. So if you're true to yourself, and this guy certainly seems to be pretty true to himself, at least mm -hmm. in this aspect, it's going to attract people who appreciate what he's doing, the stand that he's making. And so even if it's the New York Times doing a total hit piece on this guy, and I don't know if that's what they've done. I'm just using them as sure. an example. Even if they're doing a total hit piece, he still made it into the New York Times. There was actually a New York Times uh, columnist who came by here the other day, just randomly stopped in and knocked on the door on the Keen Activist Center, yeah. wanting to talk to people. And this guy wasn't just some random guy who was interested in you know what was happening here. He was well-researched. He knew lots of names of the players. He knew lots of the incidents and what had happened in those incidents. When I was telling him about stuff, he already knew about many of the things that, that we were discussing. So, uh, But based on the way he was asking questions, I could tell that this article that he's going to write isn't going to be, uh, you know, it's not going to be a puff piece about Free Keen or the Free State Project and the Liberty Movement in New Hampshire. Yeah, maybe he'll say some nice things. I don't know. But I know for a fact it's not going to be a puff piece. But if it turns out to be a total hit piece, that's fine with me, too. I got coverage in the New York Times. You know? Sure. Okay. I understand that. But I mean, I think the, one of the reasons why I asked this question is this is, a, this is a, a very important cause, what's going on out in Nevada. But even the family is concerned about some of the people who are being attracted to this cause. Sure. Right? If they're saying, let's get our guns and go there and maybe we'll shoot federal agents. Not the kind of people that you, you want to attract. It's true. So, I mean, the same thing. you can't thing. help who comes, right? So, obviously, you should be true to yourself, and you're hopefully going to attract the right people to you, but you never know when the crazies are going to show up, or the dangerous people, or the feds, or the undercover uh, agent provocateurs, for instance. It's almost, the, the cost of them showing up, though, for so many things is so potentially high and mm -hmm. dangerous that it's almost worth depending on what you're talking about, coming up with uh, strategies for what to do if that happens or yes, it, how, it to not, is. how to not attract those people. Well, you can't not attract if you can't not attract the crazies. The crazies mm. are I mean, it's happened here in New Hampshire. We've got a very positive movement, I think, here in New Hampshire, the Free State Project, bringing liberty activists all to the same place. But there have been some undesirable activists who have shown up over time. The good news is, They've most all of them have left over time as well. And so that is the question. And I'm glad you brought this up because I wanted to go there in this discussion. We talked about how to gain publicity for your, your, your movement or the aggression that's happening against you by the state you want to publicize. But how do you deal with those undesirables? We had it happen out in Central Square when we did the 420 celebrations, when every day more and more and more people were showing up, people who we didn't know, people from, from town. the town, yeah. uh, not even activists, just people who wanted to get high. And the more people show up, the more out of control a situation becomes. You can't tell everybody what to do. They don't care who you are. You're not in charge. Right. More coming up. How do you deal with that? It's Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know. What can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. Bitbrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything with free shipping. What can you find at bitcoingeneralstore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. I'm a very bad man, and I'm outside your house. I see you've got an alarm. Outstanding. Because houses with alarms always have the coolest stuff. Unless you've got a door double reinforcing your door frame. I'll kick your fancy door just like any other door. And I'll be gone before the police even get the call. Don't worry, I'll try not to make a mess. <laughs> Door Devils are available at participating Ace Hardware stores and locksmiths, or visit DoorDevil.com. The TalkStream Live app for iPhone, iPad, and Android is the fastest and easiest way to access live talk radio anytime, anywhere. 
Download the free TalkStream Live app right now and see for yourself. You'll enjoy instant access to the best in live talk radio. Find your favorite shows and discover some new ones. The TalkStream Live app is available in the App Store, the Google Play Store, or visit TalkStreamLive.com. That's TalkStreamLive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. You're invited to take control of the airwaves. You can just dial on in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And get signed up for our news updates at news.freetalklive.com and you'll now get if you're on the email list you will now begin to get the weekly digest emails which are a summary of the most popular stories as submitted and voted on by you the listeners at freetalklive.com that'll come into your email box every week plus you'll get updates uh you know if there's something else that we need to send that's more urgent you'll get those in your email box as well you'll get those some of those same uh updates on our facebook google plus and twitter you won't get the weekly digest emails though obviously on those sites but you can sign up for any one of those and follow us in whichever way you prefer at news.freetalklive.com again that's news.freetalklive.com Uh, Let's continue here. We can talk about how to deal with undesirable activists that show up. In this case, we've uh, what brought the conversation up is the Bundy situation, the so-called range war that's developing in Nevada, where apparently there have been some Facebook groups developed where people are talking about how they're going to form a militia and go down there and fight against the feds who are bringing in men with guns to try to stop this cattle rancher from uh, letting his ra- his cattle graze on certain portion of federal government or federal claimed land by the Bureau of Land Management. Let's go to Shauna. She's in St. George, Utah, listening to KZNU. Hello, Shauna. Hi. Um, yeah, I was actually going to call in about this, but I'm glad somebody else did. Welcome. Um, there's a member of... Huh? I said welcome. Oh, there's a Go member ahead. of the Bundy. Oh, thank you. There's a member member of the Bundy family that comes to the local show. Whoa, you're very very now. muffled. I I don't know what you just did, but it sounds like you're holding your finger over the hole on your phone or something. Oh no. Can you hear me yes, now? Yes, much better now. Go ahead. Okay, I'll try to keep keep my head at this point. Um, <laughs> he's pointed out some interesting facts. They are actually killing his cattle with those sniper rifles. They are actually shooting his cows. Really? Oh my. And. And the reason that um, his, I believe it was his brother, was tased three times today trying to see what was in a dump truck that they had on the property, that the federal government had on the property. And they tased him three times. 
trying to just three separate times while he was trying to climb up into the truck to look inside. They ran out of tasers, and so he was able to see what it was. They had torn down his um, water pumps or his water uh, silos and his um, corrals. Oh, my. And and also another interesting thing is they've been well, – I live in St. George, Utah, and we also have turtle protection land down here. Mm-hmm. But they've been doing the same thing with the tortoises as they've been doing with the black-footed prairie dogs. There are now too many of them on these properties, and actually the, the federal government is euthanizing them themselves. <laughs> the the turtles. So it absolutely – yes, there have been numerous articles about that as well. Hmm. So, so we have to protect um, the turtles so the I'm, I'm, federal government can kill them. They tried this yeah, with exactly. the forests yeah, too. The, like they, and yeah. that's why one of the reasons why forest fires are so out of control is that the they're US, poorly mismanaged. By well, the, yeah, the U.S. Government. Forest Service, uh, U.S. Forest Service doesn't allow small burns that clean out brush. Mm-hmm. So now you get big ones. Yeah, you get big ones. Shauna, was there more you wanted so to share about and, the situation? Well. I just, I, I'm really excited. He's going to be on your show. It's going to be, uh, he's, he's really great. And what he's actually more concerned, concerned about is the civil liberties that are being violated here. He's the last cattle rancher that's still left on free range land. And there's nothing wow. out there. I don't know if you guys have been to that area. There's nothing pretty much but sagebrush hmm. out there. And so the only thing suitable really for that land to be used is cattle. And he's the only one that has taken a stand and is still left. They've run the rest of them off. What um, and, what are the cows um, eating if it's just sagebrush? I mean, they eating sagebrush? Well, there's a few other plants out there, but they are plants that the cows eat. I know that. I read a whole article about it, and I can't remember. I don't know very yeah, much about you. cattle and stuff like that. But um, it and in fact, the tortoises even eat the cow dung, just like they eat other animals too. Mm, yeah, so it's good so for them. There's good I stuff left I over. Really don't see sure. how a slow moving. I don't see how a slow moving cow can can kill it turtle it's really all about control it's bound to happen sooner or later but the question is is can the turtles outbreed the uh the odd turtle that a cow might step on and crush and i suppose it's possible apparently they are because they're euthanizing (laughs) right i mean it's getting to be pretty ridiculous the whole thing and that there's no reason why and and he he went into it the other day about what the blm was actually created for and how they have overstepped their boundaries numerous numerous times um, As all government and, agencies and do, because the government exactly. uh, bureaucrats have incentives to expand their government agencies. They want more bureaucrats. They want larger budgets. They want more benefits, and they want more control over our lives. And exactly. I thank you, Shauna, for your Morning. call tonight. I really oh, appreciate. No problem. Yep, really appreciate hearing from you. Eight fifty five four fifty free is the toll free number here tonight. Is it possible that the Bureau of Land Management in Nevada is running out of things to do? Well, that's just the thing. They don't do anything, according to this rancher, except right. harass people because he was paying these fees, I think, up until the 1990s. In the, in the early 90s, he stopped paying the BLM fees in protest and started using the money he would have paid them to, to actually upgrade the land, mm. to actually do what they are supposed to be doing and maintaining the land properly. But they're just a bunch of lazy bureaucrats, so they don't do what they're supposed to do. Mm, right. So uh, before we go on here with the calls, I do want to address the question of the, the crazy, the dangerous, the violent, uh, the activists with the terrible ideas, with the you know very embarrassing uh, speech impediments or whatever it is. You know, the people that are coming in and sort of screwing up your movement. In the case of the, uh, the folks out in Nevada, the allegation is that there are some dangerous people who are going to be showing up who may be likely to roust up some people toward violence. And so the question is, how do you deal with that as uh, as an organizer, as somebody who is an originator of an activist idea? Sure. And that is a good question, and I don't have very many good answers for it because this is something that's relatively new, at least within the libertarian movement. The Free State Project is the first time ever that libertarians have ever had a significant foothold or liberty-minded people have ever had a significant activist uh, total a number of activists in a given area. We've grown to the point where there are interpersonal conflicts that happen even within this movement. We've grown to the point where we have successful forms of activism like the 420 celebrations where random people who we don't know and have never heard of will show up and do questionable things, 
do things that are uh, are very negative. Like there was one story about somebody who showed up and started snorting coke out at uh, the the 420 celebrations. Yeah, nobody knew who this guy was. He was just some local who got it in his head that he was going to go out and start doing some lines off of the the fountain at uh, in downtown Keene. Yeah, well, you think that's a big deal? Let's go over a little further. So, uh, what do you do in that situation? Well, you can ostracize the person. I think that's probably the most effective thing. Uh, it's a peaceful thing to do. You can't attack them. You can't physically uh, stop them from being in a... Po- if, if you're doing a protest in a public place, you can't stop that person from being there. So you have to exist with that person. So uh, so doing what you can to... Fr- before you ostracize, to communicate with the person. Take the person aside. As an experienced activist, maybe there's actually somebody who really does have good intentions, but they've never done this before, so they don't know what they're doing. Try to explain to them what an appropriate method of action is in as nice a way as possible and communicate with them as well as you possibly can. They'll either accept that or won't, right? Right. They'll either take your advice as the seasoned activist or they will go about doing whatever it is they want to do. If they go about doing whatever it is they want to do, then that is when you can take more extreme measures such as singling the person out as somebody who people shouldn't talk to, Mm -hmm. um, spread the word quietly at first. If the person continues to be a problem after being ostracized at some level, you could bring the ostracism more public, for instance, like pointing out this person is causing an issue and you may want to be cautious. Get on a megaphone and point this person out. Um, Another thing that activists have done is they've actually created a sign that somebody held up above the alleged Fed, the alleged agent provocateur and, you know, like cop with an arrow or something like that. So walk around following that person around. Make that person uncomfortable. They're, They're trying to make people uncomfortable at your event. So there's nothing wrong with you doing something that will make them uncomfortable. Sure, so these sure. are just some basic ideas as to what you can do. But ultimately, all you can really do is control your message and make sure that the news media doesn't interview the crazy person or the violent person and that, you know, try your best. Because that's to where make, they want to go. Right. That try. is absolutely. You had a good suggestion a couple segments ago, too, when you said that, you know, a good piece of activism would be to help these people out behind the scenes with scheduling an organization. Because you also want to be able to present a calm and likable face to the public. So having somebody who can get things in order behind the scenes so you could be like, I'm the guy, I own the mm-hmm. land, I go up to the I go up to the mic or I go up to the interview and I'm calm, I'm likable, I'm not intimidating. I think that's very important. I think that that helps remove the frantic element uh, from that because people see that right away and they say, oh, well, clearly here's some kind of crazy. He's all fidgety and nervous. We'll you come know? back with more. You can share your thoughts and suggestions if you want to join us. Hour number three is on the way. All of this sparked from uh, one little bit of show prep that we started the show out with mm, tonight. That's how it always is. Anything that we brought in. 855, and that's the way I like it. 855, 450 free. You may take control here. We've also got Skype. You can utilize that. The username is lrn.fm. Hour three, still to come here on Free Talk Live. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 9th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,304, silver opened at $19.78, and Bitcoin is trading at $442.78. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Bitmain Technology, creators of the Antminer S1 180 Gigahash Bitcoin Miner. No pre-order, ships on time, and sometimes it's early. Buy yours today at bitmaintech.com. Support also comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication, along with posters and promotions materials. Online, affordablesound.com, or call them, 512-459-5253. And support comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing. Tickets available for their second annual conference. It'll take place June 21st, voiceandexit.com. In the news, as pro-Russian forces prepare for conflict with Ukrainian authorities, the United States is accusing Russia of creating conflict within eastern Ukraine. Separatist forces have seized several buildings, creating barricades, and are apparently arming themselves with makeshift bombs as they demand independence from Kiev. Former Mount Gox CEO Mark Karpeles is beyond the jurisdiction of United States courts. That's according to his attorney. Karpeles and the now-bankrupt Bitcoin exchange are currently being sued for consumer fraud after Mt. Gox announced it could not account for several hundred thousand customers' bitcoins. Working under the theme with Generation Liberty, the Libertarian Party of Texas will kick off its 2014 state convention at the Frank W. Mayborn Civic and Convention Center in Temple this week. The convention will run from April 11th through the 13th. Candidates will be nominated, breakout sessions will be held, and special guests will speak. That includes independent journalist Ben Swan, who will serve as keynote speaker during a Saturday evening dinner banquet. Tickets are required for some events, with information to be found at lptexas.org. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Dorothy Erminger at Capstar Lending. Dorothy can walk you through the ins and outs of buying a home. Give her a call, 512-343-6494, or apply online. Call Dorothy.com, NMLS 216-624. Support also comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to mymagicmud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's mymagicmud.com. And support comes from Brave New Books. Find them online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 9th, 2014. Check out the website, thelibertybeat.com. It's known as Heartbleed and is described by experts as being one of the most serious computer security threats in recent years. Reuters reports that Heartbleed is a newly discovered bug in widely used web encryption technology that makes data on major websites vulnerable to hacker attacks. Security experts say Heartbleed is so troubling because victims can't tell if their data has been accessed. The bug has existed for about two years. Security experts say now might be a good time to change passwords. A federal judge says the State Department should not have delayed the prosecution of former Blackwater security contractors charged with shooting unarmed Iraqi civilians. Russia Today reports the contractors were working on behalf of the United States at the time of the 2007 shootings. They are accused of shooting 14 Iraqi civilians without justification and in violation of deadly force rules. The United States and Japan are hoping to strike a two-way trade deal that could help seal the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The two nations are meeting this week in anticipation of President Barack Obama's arrival in Japan on April 24th. The United States is hoping to convince Japan to open its rice, beef, pork, dairy, and sugar markets. U.S. Trade uh, Representative Michael Froman 
stated that Japan was holding up the international agreement by refusing to be flexible. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal Printing, your source for anything printed since 1972. Now accepting Bitcoin online at MassAppealInc.com. And support comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 9th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A Japanese-American internment facility was still in operation in the mountains of Northern California. The facility should have been closed in 1945 and its 6,000 residents released, but unfortunately the camp was overlooked until this week. I am happy to announce, however, that the remaining 118 de detainees have now been fully exonerated of suspicion of spying for General Tojo and they have been freed. Next item of business. The President will be meeting with the Australian Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd. Yes, Denise? Oversight. How could this have happened? Well, Denise, it looks like the camps just somehow slipped through the cracks. The end of the Second World War was a hectic time in America, and it's only natural that we let a couple of things slip in our excitement over defeating the Nazis. Who's going to be held responsible for this? Investigation? No, there won't. In fact, the War Relocation Authority was responsible for the decommissioning of the internment facilities, um, but that organization ceased to exist in 1946. So, no. This is the Onion News Network. So I found some of the video. Uh, courtesy of uh, the Adam Kokesh page on Facebook, we've been we've been talking about what's been happening out in the uh, so-called range war in Nevada. What you're listening to here is audio of several uh, uniformed men. You can hear the tasers pointing weapons, tasers. They've got barking dogs, as you can hear, at a large crowd. Uh, I would say a crowd of pro approximately 30 people. I'm not sure exactly How where many this. of them are there. Uh, there are several officers, so maybe six, Generally, seven. They, they do not like those odds. So they've been tasing people, apparently. I don't think that was included in this particular video. So anyway, the range war, uh, this is a, it goes on for 11 minutes. This range war, for those of you just tuning in, uh, is a, a rancher, cattle rancher that has been on a property for generations. He's been, uh, his cattle's been grazing on Federal Bureau of Land Management land. He hasn't been paying the fees in protest because he says the Bureau of Land Management, uh, you know, they're a bunch of bureaucrats and they're just taking the money. Whereas he'd rather actually put the money to good use in improving the land, which apparently they were doing a real shoddy job of. Now, they are stealing his cattle. Uh, one caller says they're shooting his cattle with snipers. Uh, there was a mainstream news article saying they had hired cowboys to come in and, you know, lasso up the cattle and take them out. And they're trying to steal his cattle and or kill his cattle. They are blocking off roads. And that's what you can see in this video is there. They've got police vehicles. They're preventing these activists from getting near the family's ranch. So they're trying to stop people from coming in and providing physical assistance to this family. They are uh, surrounding you know, the ranch with snipers, apparently. This is a situation that is brewing into something that could po possibly be very violent. And obviously tensions are high. You've got, again, cops with dogs and tasers attacking a crowd of people who are just there to protest, it appears. One thing that um, when it, it's, it's, you know, if anybody's outnumbered, and that's what these police are in this circumstance, they're going to feel cornered. Cornered mm -hmm. people do bad things. Yeah. So I'll uh, link to this video. And apparently Adam Kokesh has gone out there because he's now living in the Los Angeles area. And Adam is on the scene out there, and I don't know what's going to you know result out of that, or I haven't watched any of his videos yet, but but he's there, and it's good to have him out there. I think he's doing some live broadcasts 
as a matter of fact. So if you sounds want, like his kind of thing. Yep. So uh, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what Adam produces because he's back. He's out of prison, and it's good to see him getting back out there and doing some video work. We're going to go and continue with your phone calls and thoughts here, and then we'll continue with some other discussions that we touched on earlier on in the program. Uh, Mark, you've yet to read this letter that you wrote to the city clerk in Keene, New Hampshire, that sent you a threat. They sent you a threatening letter about your dog. We'll get to that animal. here. About your animal. Uh, Bill is in Jackson, Michigan, listening to WPBQ. Bill, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, guys. Hey. Well, uh, the uh, situation in Nevada brought up uh, memories of things that the feds have done and mismanaged over the, the many decades, such as the uh, spotted owl situation up in the Pacific Northwest, and they caused far more damage to everything in, in the way they tried to carry it out. And, of course, there never really was a, 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 a threat to the, the so-called spotted owl. And, I, and I mean, there are many others like the the snail darter in Tennessee and the Mississippi Sand Hill crane in Mississippi, and they just have, the feds, that is, just have, have a horrible track record in trying to manage anything that they ever do in terms of the land and, and the species. It's absolutely true. Yeah, I remember the Rush Limbaugh was deep into this spotted owl thing, and uh, you know, at one point or another, he's uh, pointed out that there's these pictures of the owls making nests and all kinds of things like uh, up on you know wires, and you know the the owls are doing fine. Uh, human encroachment isn't affecting them in the least. Right, <laughs> but of course, it, it affected the feds because they lost control of something, or at least that's something that they thought they thought they could control. <laughs> right, Bill. Anything else you want to share tonight? Uh, pretty much uh, is, is what I want to add to the, the, the discussion about their horrible track record of trying to do do whatever they do. Yep, and then one of our callers last hour said that the situation in Nevada is based on protecting some sort of tortoise, which apparently uh, is now being killed and euthanized by the very same bureau that is attempting to protect them or something ridiculous like that. Thank you, Bill, for your call tonight. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's talk about protecting animals on the home front. Mark, your dog is under attack. And by the way, for those that want more on the range war story, we're probably going to be hearing more about it. We had a listener who said he would call in. He's going out there uh, tomorrow to kind of check the situation out on the ground. We'll get a, a report from him, and then we'll actually talk to one of the Bundy family members on Saturday night. That's the plan. So we'll be bringing you more about that. But, Mark, uh, this is uh, your situation is something that happens to more people. Not very many people are ranchers and can relate to what's happening to the guy out in Nevada. But a lot of people have dogs or cats or animals that they love within their household. And there are people calling themselves the city or the town or the state that come after them with threats of violence. What has happened to you? Well, I didn't think that this was going to be something worth uh, talking about this evening, so I didn't bring their letter of sort of threat uh, that I've got to you know, take, take care of this by the end of April or, or else. But um, essentially, I, you know, I took my animal to the veterinarian. I have a, um, I have a mailbox here in, in, in Keene, New Hampshire, where I get my mail. Mm -hmm. And I took my animal to a veterinarian in Keene, New Hampshire, and I believe that the town, cities, towns and cities in the surrounding area want a list, at least the larger ones, want a list of the people who get their animals vaccinated, specifically dogs vaccinated, um, so that they can uh, then hit them up for, um, you know, hit them up for money. Licensing fees. Licensing fees. Now, one of the reasons that they want the licensing fee, get this, is to ensure that the animals get a, gets a rabies shot. Sure. How do they get the list of people who um, have animals so that they can tax them for the license fee? <laughs> From the rabies shots. From the list of rabies shots. So the people who are actually doing the thing that they're trying to collect a fee to supposedly enforce, as if, I don't know, I've never seen the, the rab dog rabies cop um, walking around making sure that people have rabies, uh, you know, their animals are mm -hmm. you know, handled for rabies. You know, let's be clear about what this is. So I wrote this letter. Um, it, it came from the city clerk. So her, what, they, they basically told you, we've determined you have an, a dog. You will pay us by this date or else. That's correct. Do you remember what the or else is? Uh, fines and that sort of thing. I believe gotcha. it's. Uh, I, I believe there's a $25 fine at some point. Okay. And then it may get worse after that. Um, so anyway, for, uh, so I wrote to the back to the city clerk. Mm -hmm. Her name's Patty. And I said, Patty, I happen, you know, we know, we know Patty. And uh, I said, Patty, I hope you're well. It's been some time since I've heard from you. 
since this is a legal <laughs> matter, I'm going to dispense with the pleasantries. I got a letter from you pointing out. Now, she signed this thing. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's an auto sign or whatever, but she's responsible for it in my yep. mind, um, whether she has any idea. Um, she's just doing her job, Mark. Yep. Pointing out that we had honey. Now, I'd like to point out honey is spelled in all capital letters. I don't know what this means, but the um, you know the, in the, their letter it was spelled in all yes caps. it was they were very clear it was uh-huh. in all capital letters. Now, um, honey is uh, for those who have been to Pork Fest. I call her Fruit Loop. My wife doesn't like that name. She goes with Honey. So she took her the first time, and okay. that's uh, that's who Honey is. So um, let's see. Pointing out that we had Honey vaccinated for rabies, and that the state requires a dog license to ensure that we vaccinated for rabies. Wait, the state requires that? Yes, it's actually okay, state, state law. law. Now, it's administered by towns, and towns are allowed to charge what they wish. So you're telling her that the state requires it. Okay. Well, th- th- that's what her letter said. You're quoting her letter. Right. I got. Well, I didn't quote her letter. Okay. Um, I just don't feel like spending that. I didn't feel like spending that much time. Got I just it. said, I got a letter from you pointing out that we had honey vaccinated for rabies and that the state requires the dog license ah, yes. to ensure that we are va- we have vaccinated for rabies. Okay. It seems ironic that you might search for scoff laws that are complying with the very reason for the law in the first place. Because <laughs> this is really nasty pool. Can can I post this on freekeen.com? No. Why? I don't want, I don't play your game games on free te- freekeen.com. Wait, what, but, but you're talking about it on the radio. Why so can't what? I post this it on This isn't freekeen. freekeen.com radio, buddy. I don't want to be associated with freekeen.com. It's just too much stuff in town. Sorry. So, um... Let's just call this what it is, a dog tax. And that's what it is. It's a dog tax. Now, you can have a cat. They're not going to tax the cat. You can have a mouse in your house, and they're not going to tax the mouse. You can have fleas on your body. We'll they're not going to tax those. With more Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to may be even more nervous than you are. And the way things are now, your references have never been more important. Here are three tips. First, know that employers are checking. Every hire is under the microscope these days. Second, they won't just be checking references you provide. Figure that all of your ex-employers will get a call and be asked, would you hire him or her again? Third, assume you will be Googled. So before you apply, remove all those party animal photos from your Facebook page. Even if you're not in the job market, effective communication skills have never been more important. With money and attention so scarce now. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want here. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Skype us, the Skype username is lrn.fm. Mark, there's a big announcement coming up with cashintocoins.com. There is. Um, I can't announce it today, obviously, but that's but it's why it's big? a big announcement coming up. It is. Uh, there's going to be some changes at cashintocoins.com. Now, they are still the fastest, safest, easiest way for you to get Bitcoins. Uh, I don't know about fastest. Uh, it would depend on pretty... F- I don't think that they're, they're the largest uh, cash into coins option out there. And you don't have to do any setup, you know, like with the other systems, you're going to link your bank account, mm, you're going to link, you're gonna show an ID, Yeah, you send them a power bill, photocopy your uh, driver's license, do those kinds of things. And after you go through those days and days of stuff, you can buy Bitcoins quite quickly, mm-hmm. um, but you can't buy them for cash without people necessarily, you know, knowing who you are, um, cash into coins, that's what they do. And they make it easy for you. It's completely legal. I know that the people are concerned with the legality of Bitcoin, but they're completely, um, that you know, they're above board. They're registered MSBs with the U.S. government, and they um, make it easy for you. So their customer service, customer service is their top priority. I have dealt with them on multiple occasions, uh, both getting bitcoins and selling bitcoins to them. Go there. You can actually donate some of your fee to charity, and orders under forty dollars have no fee at all. So it's cashintocoins.com. Um, it's it's amazing. They they had uh, their, their bank pulled their ability to do uh, deposit transfers, and they have nearly as much business coming in through money orders, checks. Um, let's see other ways that you can do it here. Uh, wire transfers. Mm-hmm. People are still using cash into coins and getting their coins that way because people want to get them without having their name attached to it. Cashintocoins.com. All right. So uh, when the announcement happens, we will bring that to you. Indeed. Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. And Mark, you were uh, in the midst of reading a letter that you wrote in response to the city clerk threatening you, city of Keene, where you don't live. Uh, you know, you don't live in the geographic area known as the city of Keene. You work here. Uh, you've got a mailbox here. And so they believe. Now, what the funny thing about this is that the city of Keene deregistered me to vote years ago because they found out that I had registered with the address, uh, you have to give them your domicile when you register. And I had put down my mailbox because I didn't want to give them where I lived in the city of Keene and, uh, or in the geographic designation known as the city of Keene. And so they deregistered, they unregistered me. You can't do that. You can't walk in to the city clerk's office and say, unregister me to vote. It does not work. Russell Canning tried it years ago and they refused to do it. They'll take your name off the registry if you die. And they eventually figure out that you're dead. Or, in my case, they figured out that I wasn't actually registered at an actual domicile. So they pulled me. And I know that they know that the the address that you have is the only mailbox store in town. Because the one that I was at shut down. This, the one you're talking about, the shipping shack, that's the only one that exists. So they know you don't live at that address. They have to know that. I guess. I don't know what they know or don't know. Um, but I guarantee you, if somebody tries to register to vote at that same address, it will be denied by that very same city clerk's office. But anyway, go ahead with your letter. So 
anyway, going on here, um, I said the the fact is is that they're looking for. Uh, they want you to have a dog license so they can ensure everybody uh, has their dog vaccinated for rabies. Mm-hmm. They look for people who don't have dog licenses through the people who have gotten rabies shots for their dogs. If this isn't the most bass backwards way to run, I mean, this is just an immoral way to run their their collection scheme because they claim it's for rabies, but they're they're getting it from the people the list from uh, the, to go after from the people who have gotten rabies shots. It's crazy. This is a dog tax, and that's what I told Patty here. So I go on. I say, look, I'll comply with your demand for money if you can prove three things. One, honey, all capital letters, honey. So I'm not sure that they got some of her placenta. I'm pretty reasonably (laughs) certain they didn't. Honey, all capital letters, is my animal. Two, honey is a dog. Now, you know, this should be reasonable for a dog license. They should have to prove the burden of proof is on the accuser and they should have to prove that an animal is a dog. And I think that a several hundred dollar DNA test should suffice. And I'll be happy to pay their five dollar dog licensing fee at that point. Oh, okay. Good luck. <laughs> if they're listening, they're probably saying, this man is cute, which is <laughs> telling us how we're going to point our guns at him. You know, and I don't think it'll come to that, obviously, in this case, but... That Honey lives in Keene, New Hampshire. Ooh. If they can, if they yeah. can prove that it's my animal, because this is really an important thing. If I find a dog on the street and I say, and I've done this with a cat, this cat needs to be neutered. Yeah. Uh, this has happened. There was a stray that was coming around on a regular basis, no collar, got those, you know, those offensive little dangly things. And I'm like, you, mister, need to go to the vet. And I got him and I took him in. And uh, w- what if I, in the process, got the animal a rabies shot and I got on their list? Now, I don't I don't feel I have the responsibility simply because I give an animal a little bit of medical treatment to own that animal after that. So if I'm, you know, just some kind of do-gooder that runs around giving dogs rabies shots, or, you know, taking them to the vet and getting them rabies shots, am I then responsible for the licensure of all of these animals? Is that the claim? Hmm. So, no, I don't think it, I don't think that's fair. You need to prove that I possess this animal, that this animal is owned by me. And mm. I think that's a very interesting story. It seems like the animal is constantly telling me what to do. No, I totally agree with you. I think you've made some valid points. I think these are things that the, the burden is on them. Yep, for the, sure. bur- the burden to prove that it's a dog. That's th- There you go. I mean, how do you know that's a dog? How do I know it's a dog? It looks I, yeah, Okay, whatever. Well, you the need fact to prove is, that's a dog. Most of the people who receive this threat are going to just go ahead and yes. pay up. They're well, not I didn't the do... first time. This is my what? second letter, and I just didn't ignore it the first time. Did the amount go up? I don't know. I wasn't, you know, there's no you, amount that I know obviously of. obviously ignored it. Uh, so, wait, so they didn't threaten you with an amount in the There's original? a fine if I didn't pay. I don't even know what the amount is. Right. Okay. I have no intention of giving these people money. Yeah. I sort of scanned their letter. I suspect it's what's going to happen is uh, they are going to go ahead and bring a charge against you, and then they'll go ahead and have to prove this in court. Like yeah. you want them to. Interesting. Do. Like you want them to. That's my pre- that's my prediction in this case because usually the government agents ignore any requests for information like this. I mean, I've I've written back to uh, the government and, and on multiple occasions and asked them for their justification and how uh, an obligation was created for me to obey their ordinances, and they never write back because they don't have any answers to those questions. Well, I've got the the clause for the, for you. Then I said, until then, I'll keep my money. If I don't hear from you, I'll consider this matter closed. <laughs> oh, you'll hear I, from them. Yeah, I tried that once, uh, <laughs> and it's worked so far. It's interesting. Yep. So, so as far as I'm concerned, this le- this matter is closed. Mm. Um, I, I I don't live in Keene. Now, if I've ever given a Keene address for anything, when does my responsibility – I don't have to tell these people what I'm doing. Um, you know, I don't have to tell them that I've moved. Oh, you need a dog license. No, I don't need your – little piece of paper no that's so funny because like i i think about how aware i am of of the state and what it does Mm -hmm. but if i move to the a a new place it would never even occur to me like oh well i have a dog so i must have to make a phone call like how to talk to the city clerk how many unregistered dogs must be running around in any city at once it's chaos all right we'll come back with more here in moments 855 450 free maybe you've encountered a situation like this (laughs) I have seen people in court, uh, or at least paying at the window. I've never seen someone take it to trial. Hmm. I wonder if it's ever even happened. Uh, but I have seen people go to the window and pay, ex- you know, kind of overdue dog fees and things like that. I wonder that. if I could bring her to court. They are not happy about that. Because <laughs> so, then they would know you have a dog. Good girl. We're coming up. This is Free Talk Live. 
If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. If you're doing something very interesting, or you have a reputation for doing something very interesting, yeah, then you become more interesting to track. I love how dramatic you are. Then you become... Oh, my. Yeah. Well... <laughs> I worked in uh, 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 psychotropic medic, uh, sorry, tri- psychotropic substances when I was working for the CIA. Yeah. So you were testing what LSD or that sort of thing, or what? <laughs> uh, hey, you think I'm going to say on the air? You've already told us you worked for the CIA. <laughs> you couldn't possibly find out who I am. The way that you speak and and your tone of voice, you sound like Cruella Deville. I just <laughs> I've noticed it from the moment you got on the phone. I uh, even looked like her. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Bring up anything here. Toll free, 855 453 that is the Pro XPN toll free line. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. You will have to send a contact request first. After that, it's easy for you to connect from that point on at freetalklive.com. Again, the LRN or the, the username you need for Skype, lrn.fm. Buzzbox. You can go get a free pound of Buzzbox coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. This is delicious coffee. Uh, you got to try it for yourself. Go get the free pound. 
Um, but one thing that they do that's different than other high-end coffee makers, now they, they've got 100% organic, top uh, 1% grade Arabica beans, shade grown. It's delicious. One thing they do that's different than these high-end coffee manufacturers is that they, they care about the people that produce it. So they allow people to take out loans to become part of their coffee co-op and work towards making a better life for themselves and their families. They also allow partners like Free Talk Live to uh, work with them to give microloans to people who have nothing to do with coffee at all. So we're trying to put together a thousand people, uh, listeners of Free Talk Live, coffee drinkers like you. Come on. What's the percentage of people that drink coffee? It's got to be in the high 80s, if not 90s percent. And everybody likes a good cup of coffee, all the coffee drinkers, like a good cup of coffee. You can go get a free pound, try it out. And in the process, once you sign up for their uh, their subscription, you can cancel at any time. You'll be helping people around the world to live a better life, to uh, you know provide for their families. These are the thing, This is the kind of hand up that you want to give people, not a handout that they just become reliant on. Coffee.freetalklive.com. The uh, toll-free number is 855-453. We're talking about Mark's animal, as he's calling it here. I think you're going to have a tough time, Mark, considering that you've probably admitted that you have a dog at certain past episodes of Free Talk Live. Well, the good that they can research Free Talk Live in the process. They might get some education on the ideas of liberty. Ooh, anyway, the yeah. city of Keene, Ba-ding. the people calling themselves the city of Keene, are threatening you. They are threatening to steal your dog from you if you don't pay up. And give them, I don't know, it's like four bucks or seven bucks or something like that. The licensing fee. It's the, it's one of those things where they've set it so low that most people are going to look at it and say, oh, sure. I'll go ahead and cut the check for seven dollars or whatever. What kind of troublemaker wouldn't? Yeah. And so Mark is not going to pay. And he's, you're going to make them prove their case to prove that the dog is a dog. You know they that, have no case, right? That the uh, that the, that the dog is residing within the boundaries of the city of Keene, and that it isn't even my dog, and that it is even your dog. So it should so be there's a dog that shows up on my property on a pretty regular basis. He just comes around and like you know he doesn't want to hang out. He doesn't want to. It doesn't want to smell hands or anything like that. He just kind of comes in, checks things out, and you know if he sees me, he runs away. Do, am I responsible for that dog too? Do I do I have to, do I owe them money for this dog that wanders out of my property sometimes? It'll yeah. be interesting to see where this goes. Uh, Want to go to the phones? We'll get to Nathan here, and you can call with your thoughts, especially if you've had to deal with something like this. Maybe you've been threatened over a dog before, and how did you handle it? Nathan is in Texas on Skype. Go ahead. Good evening, gentlemen. Hey. Uh, I was floored when you said that it was in all capital letters. I think you should bring a defense of: Do the laws and the Constitution apply to your animal? What do you mean? Well, because the all capital letters uh, animal may not refer to the flesh and blood animal, which may or may not be under your roof. So you may have to have them prove that the laws apply to you or apply to this animal. So Don't try never to prove that. Try to do the uh, um, the whole sovereign sovereign dog citizen thing on them. Oh, and I also would love to see this on freekeen.com. I cannot believe it was in capital letters. I thought you, I thought you were pulling my leg there, Mark. No, it's capital letters, dog. Um, the dog's name is in capital letters. Well, first so, of all, coming at the using the question of uh, how does the how does the law become applicable to me, or in this case, the dog? They never answer that question. No. Uh, it's it's a fun question to ask because it shows the absurdity to some extent of their system. Um, but they'll never answer that question. And if you ask it in court, it'll be objected to, and the judge will uphold the objection. But nonetheless, this is going to be a fascinating case to watch. And so, Mark, you're basically saying that you're going to prohibit me from coming to the trial, or recording video. I'm not prohibiting video, you from doing anything. Putting video Ian, out online. You're a free, sovereign man on but the you're land. You're going to ask me. You're as, a living human being. You're going to ask me as a friend to not do those things. I'm not asking you to do anything. You you told me that you did not want me publicizing this case. On I just don't want to be involved in Free Keen. Does being reported upon by a news website mean you're involved in that website? When the union leader does a news story on me, am I involved in the union leader at that point? I don't think that they, uh, you know, I think that it would depend on the union leader gives all kinds of, uh, you know, good news agencies will give a, um, you know, report on how they're related to this thing or that thing. If I'm reported on in Free Keen, um, especially if it, you know, it's, it's going to look like, um, I'm, I, I'm related to it, is what I think. Now, wouldn't you agree to the people, to the sort of uninitiated and keen that read this stuff? There's a compromise here. 
Okay. And, w- and I think that the article mentions that you were strongly opposed to being a... So- I mean, you you could say that, you know, and you could still get the story that you want, Ian, and mention somewhere in the article that Mark was opposed to this association. You could just... Uh, you That's could just, interesting. You could put a note at the top. Note. Mark Edgington is no way associated with Free Keen, doesn't wish to be associated with Free Keen. Here's, and then you report on the story. Does that sound like a compromise you could live with? I don't know. Are you going to provide me with materials? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, I'll, I'll give you the title. When Animals Are Taxed. <laughs> <laughs> right? Remember? Animals, when Animals Attack, folks. Yes. If you're scoring at home, that was a good play on words. Yeah, that I is think a good right. one. Uh, Nathan, okay, so what else did you want to share? Anything? Oh, I also had a, a second question on the same subject. Yes. Um, I don't remember which program it was, but one of the programs, someone was talking about times when the bureaucrats are, are basically bluffing. Like, you know, they know that you're they know that they have no legal case that what they're telling you to do, you have no obligation at all to do is I, this sounds like one of those cases like they just sort of made this up. Yeah, it's, Oh, they have there's an obligation in the uh, the government's RSAs. Yeah, Everyone thing, has to license their dog well, there, and put a collar on it. But it, 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 this is confusing to me because I have used um, the address of uh, the Keen Activist Center for certain things in the past. Mm. So I'm not sure whether they believe I live there or whether they've just taken a list of everybody who's gotten a, uh, a vaccination and just sent them a phishing letter, That's essentially. That's what it is. Well, yeah. it's just they you probably don't know. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's exactly what this is. They probably don't even know they sent it to you. You said that you know Patty. She probably doesn't even. She probably didn't even read. I, it the, looked like an. Your it name looked like it there. could be an auto signature. Yeah. Well, maybe I was thinking of a different uh, uh, matter then, but it, it sounded like it was. It was a uh, like something that bureaucrats will sometimes do. Like they'll just kind of you know make up an obligation for you to follow. Nope. No. Do this is uh, personal... Section Four Sixty Six of the New Hampshire RSAs, the Licensing of Dogs. They multiply uh, multiple page long just lengthy amount of legalese talking about dogs in various different circumstances. You owe us. But the number one point is all about getting it licensed. It's a dog tax. And uh, that's what uh, what it comes down to. This is supposed to be to get people to um, you know make sure that the animals are, are vaccinated for rabies, but they got me from the list of animals that were vaccinated for rabies. It's disgusting. Oh, well, fair enough. Uh, it must have been another issue, but... Uh, do you know? Are there times where the bureaucrats will do that, where they'll just kind of, you know, see what they can get away with, so to speak? Uh, they're always sending out letters trying to get money. Well, that's exactly what they're doing here. They are using the existing statutes to see what they can get away with. They're just sending out invoices, and then they'll send out another. I'll bet one. you. I'll bet you people in surrounding towns that have they'll their dogs it. will just send them some money to make them go away. Right. They don't want to go to court. I've Even received, though they're in the right. Yeah, I, I used to live in Massachusetts, and I received quite a few letters like this, at least a handful and they didn't of, act on them? of letters like this. No, never, I never acted on them. I said, that's silly. Why would I have, why would this be a thing that I would pay? And, you know, left Massachusetts, hmm. didn't go back, gotten pulled over in Massachusetts. There aren't warrants for my arrest. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that the phishing, that term is very accurate. And I think there's always just mailings going out looking for money to come back. Thanks, Nathan, for your call tonight. And because it works. Yeah. Because well, at this point, works. they're about they're, they're about a uh, dollar in. It's about 50 cents to send a first class letter, right? They're about a mm-hmm. dollar in on a $5 license. They're insane. Oh, yeah, they are. Uh-huh. Uh, it's, it's all about compliance. It's all about you being obedient, doing what you're told. When animals are taxed. We will come back with more in moments. You can take control in the remaining uh, minutes here of Free Talk Live. More coming up, 855 450 free. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. 
Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Uncover a simple privacy loophole that can stop the NSA spying thugs in their tracks at privacylockdown.com. The NSA has already shut down hundreds of sites, and the truth be told, they could shut down this operation at any time. See, the privacy loophole I'm about to show you allows you to make all your sensitive information disappear in the next 30 days or less. Go to privacylockdown.com now to take your life off the grid and see the loophole in the NSA and FBI spying machine before they close the loophole forever. Go to privacylockdown.com. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. The following is an important free offer for smokers only. The makers of Victor, the world's most advanced e-cigarette, have just authorized the release of free starter kits to all smokers who call in the next 10 minutes. Valued at $99, these Victor starter kits are available for free, but only while supplies last. To guarantee your free kit, call in the next 10 minutes, 1-800-564-6941. The revolutionary Victor design creates only water vapor. There is no foul-smelling smoke and no unhealthy tar. This allows individuals to enjoy the nicotine they love without restriction, no matter where they are. The financial advantages over cigarettes are considerable as well. It is estimated that the average smoker can save hundreds of dollars a month with Victor. Again, free Victor starter kits are now available to any smoker who calls in the next 10 minutes. This is a radio-only offer not available in stores, so call now for your free kit. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. 1-800-564-6941. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free. 855-453. That is the ProXPN toll-free line. And we'll continue on uh, over the next year, getting through the 30 things to stop doing to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> We're averaging about one uh, per show with Brett on it. and That makes uh, it once a week. I appreciate yeah. you waiting. That's Well, you like this, uh, this these kind I, of topics. I do. And when we're done, I'll edit it together, the 30 episodes of Free Talk <laughs> Live, into work. one podcast. So, Brett, by the way, speaking of his podcast, you can go to schoolsucksproject.com and you can download via podcast or direct link various different episodes sure. of the show that has been going on for, was it five years now? Yeah. You know, what I would say to people real quick, if you've never been there before, go to schoolsucksproject.com. There's a drop, men- a drop down menu called Series See what's there. See if there's something interesting you'd like to learn more about. Scroll through the front page. See if there's uh, recent shows. And if you even, like, say you're a big fan of Mark Edge, put him into the search. See what comes up. He's Mm -hmm. been on uh, School Sucks uh, a couple of times. Uh, If I'm on Free Talk Live and it's worth reposting, I'll put it in my feed. So you can find Mark. You can find Ian. Uh, you can find your favorite uh, Liberty personalities like Derek J or Jeffrey Tucker or 
a uh, whole bunch of others. A treasure trove. Of treasure. Content. I like that. I didn't want to <laughs> say that myself, but since you did, yes, treasure trove. So go to schoolsuckspproject.com for more of Brett as we go to the phones and your calls and thoughts. Toll free number is 855 450 free. That's uh, brought to you by Pro XPN. And, uh, you know, speaking of videos, YouTube, we've got a YouTube channel. And we've just, within the last couple months, started to upload videos to it. Full episodes of Free Talk Live, all three hours per night. Uh, the cam version of the show essentially is recorded and then uploaded after our live show. So if you want to go and watch Free Talk Live, maybe you've missed a moment, you want to see what happened in the studio, you can do that now at youtube.freetalklive.com. Again, youtube.freetalklive.com. It'll take you right to our YouTube channel. Barry is in Charleston, uh, West Virginia, listening to WVTS. Hey, Barry. Hey, fellas. How are you doing? Welcome, sir. What's on your mind tonight? Uh, you're talking about taxes, federal tax, or just tax in general. Um, our, a populist needs structure, and we need to pay for that structure. I just have a problem with how much we have to pay the structure for to keep the structure. And that's really uh, kind of the problem when you have a monopoly. So what we've been taught our whole lives is, is that – in order to have government, that government must be a monopoly. It can't have competition. But what we found through economics is that monopolies tend to provide very poor customer service. They tend to cost a great deal. Um, and we've got all that. We have really crappy customer service at a very high price. And that's really what the, the whole that's the whole conundrum here. I think we need to uh, constitutionally pass a law to limit how much they can tax their population. And I would like to cap it at no more than 10%. Why would they do that, that though? 9.9, .9 because uh, God asked for 10% in a tithe. But why would they do I that, agree. Barry? I mean, you're talking about having politicians do something like that. They'll never even, even consider it. But the population, <laughs> the people, have the power to enforce that. How? We just need to... How? We need to elect good people to go Man. in there and change that. Well, I, see, that's... I'm asking for a big I'm asking for a big miracle if you will, but the population we what have makes the you power think, to Okay, do that. Barry, I appreciate where you're coming from. I want to make it clear I I understand yes. where you're coming from. It's a it's a fairly common refrain that we need to get those bad guys out of DC or We've said it here on the show wherever, many years ago. Yeah, wherever it is that the bad guys are. But what, it right. is, what is it that makes you believe that good people are going to even run for those seats in the first place or have a, sh a shot at even getting through a primary? That want to uh, even hang out with the politicians in D.C.? Who would want to yeah, do that? I mean, what makes you think good people like Ron Paul? I mean, Ron Paul is, a, is an unusual person in Washington, D.C. What makes you think people yeah. like him are going to even waste their time with this? I don't. Right. Good people <laughs> do good thing. things in life. Good people are creating yeah. products and services, and they're out there satisfying uh, consumers and helping their customers and, and making My, you know, charities. Good the people. town that I grew up in, St. Albans, West Virginia, they just passed an ordinance, a tax rather, that the rainwater that comes off your house goes oh, no. into the gutter. They're – blows my mind. They're charging, I think, $7.50 a month for every house. And there's probably maybe 12,000 people in the city or, or city uh, limits. That, we have to put a cap on... I'm getting upset, so... Uh, no, it's for, okay. We don't we out. don't mind people getting upset, getting passionate. It's actually good. <laughs> uh, you know, get it out there. This is a good a venue, a good forum for that kind of thing. It's just that this has been said forever. I mean, people have always yeah. said we need to get throw the bums out. And then two years or four years later, when you get a chance to throw the bums out, ninety percent of the incumbents stay right where they are. And even well, if the, the even if I'm, the incumbent dies or somehow leaves or retires and then is replaced with somebody who's new, that's just another scumbag piece of trash politician who's going to continue using the power they have to reward their friends and punish their enemies. And it seems like there's no end to the process. Now, there's a suggestion. A state, go ahead. I'm, go ahead. I'm from a state that yes, I'm from a state that reelected Robert C. Byrd. And the argument that these people give me is, well, he's done a lot for West Virginia. Well, yes, but he sold his soul to every vote that he voted for. 
just to get more money in West Virginia. And hell, we did. West Virginia should be self-efficient with all the coal that we have. You know, all we right. should be. Who like got the money? When people say excited. this, people love this one. Oh well, they're bringing back the bacon uh, from, <laughs> yeah. from DC. And uh, wait a minute. When you say that West Virginia got money because of Robert Byrd, what does that really mean? What it really means is you didn't get jack. You paid. Yeah. You paid in, and West Virginia, the state of West Virginia, the people calling themselves West Virginia, who ain't you, they're the ones yeah. who got the this money. Was, this was a very popular statement with a lot of people on the left during the, the bailouts, especially the auto bailouts and the bank bailouts. They said, oh, we've, got, we've gotten all the money back. Well, your children have been billed, and their children have been billed, but you haven't received a check, so your use of pronouns there, like we, that's that's very interesting. Uh, I forget who said it. It was some other uh, libertarian podcaster, but first thing, if you have these ideas for government, first find an organized crime family and turn it into a charity. And if you can do that, <laughs> then maybe this is a worthwhile uh, project that could be applied to uh, government. I think the Rockefellers, uh, they did that, didn't they? <laughs> no, what? I th- I think they might have. They, they go the other way, I think, a little bit more. Oh, Barry, okay. I, I had it backwards then. I'm sorry. Barry, I, I thank you for your there. call tonight. I do appreciate thank hearing you. from you. I get the, the intention. I mean, people want to believe that it's possible to change the system from the inside. At the federal level, it's not possible. In New Hampshire, however, I do believe it is possible. We've seen people- You believe that it's possible to take a uh, an organized crime gang, take it over, and uh, turn it good? Because that's what uh, Brett just suggested is impossible. I think it's difficult in New Hampshire, but I think that we've seen people who love freedom actually getting elected here, which doesn't happen anywhere else in the United States in any meaningful yeah, fashion. I think political activists can feel, can be assured that they exist, in, <laughs> at least in New Hampshire, <laughs> where if they were trying this in Massachusetts or New York or New Jersey. Yeah, you have no chance in yeah. these other states. Oh, and they, in those states, they might even be murdered. So, you know, right. there's there's all kinds of advantages to, to doing it here. So if you really want to, if you love liberty, and, and that means you have to understand what freedom means, that you have to allow others to be free in order to be free yourself, and that being free means you should be able to live your life how you want, so long as you don't hurt anybody else. If you get what freedom's all about, you really need to check out the Free State Project at freestateproject.org to learn more about a movement that's bringing people together who really want to see change happen, who want to do more than just complain about it or fantasize about it. These are people who are putting their ideas into action. They're taking uh, their own self-volition and they're getting out there and they're doing things in a variety of different things. Maybe it's running for political office. Maybe it's going ahead and not paying a dog fee like Mark is talking about here and and possibly going to court. Make them prove their case. So there's a wide range of, uh, of activism that happens here. Thinking about freedom outside of a political context is very, very important as well. And I think this is why a lot of these people who they want to hold out this hope, because if they can only think about things in in this context of you want change, it happens through politics and government, because that's what we've been taught our Mm -hmm. whole lives. It's no, uh, you know, no fault of theirs that that's what they think. That's what they've been taught. So it's it's a big step to admit that you're powerless in that arena. It's like, yeah, you would want to say, oh, yeah, we could just elect the right people. It's more or, comfortable to say you want change, and then some politician some comes kind along to promise it to yeah, you. Yeah, about how it could happen. Well, the, the, the politician will make it seem more real. Hey, yeah. here's this guy. He's saying change, hope, freedom, liberty. Maybe he's telling the truth. All right, we're going to give it one more shot this election. And then next time it comes around and people do the same exact thing over and over again. Well, this time we're going to present you with a woman. Keep voting for the same people. Just the faces change. See you tomorrow night at freetalklive.com in the meantime. There's a tr- Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. 
the monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc, and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, April 9th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.83 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,304 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $452. Former NSA contractor Edward Snowden tells Vanity Fair about his motivation for leaking tens of thousands of secret documents, saying, Every person remembers some moment in their life where they witnessed some injustice, big or small, and looked away, because the consequences of intervening seemed too intimidating. But there's a limit to the amount of incivility and inequality and inhumanity that each individual. 